Now, I love action RPG games. I play a crap ton of, especially Grim Dawn. I've got over a thousand hours in Path of Exile, and I've played a ton of the Diablos. Mostly Diablo 2, 3, and 4 were kind of a disappointment to me for a couple of different reasons. Um, and then there's Last Epoch, which I've played, uh, we played on stream some time ago. I think when version 0.8 originally dropped, and we tried again with 0.9. I was a little disappointed with, assuming I'm getting the version numbers right. Um, I'm getting, I was a little disappointed with 0.9 because the multiplayer was a little bit meh, wonkified. Um, it has gotten a lot better. I, in a week and a half, something like 11 days, version 1.0 of the game drops, which introduces uh, the last of the missing classes, uh, a bunch of new end game content, um, these like trade factions so you can play, like they've, they've done a really good solution for figuring out the balance between um, supporting players who want to trade gear versus players who want to play sort of solo self found that I'm very excited about. I'm very hyped about what we're doing this game and 1.0 drops in a week. As far as I know, there's no server wipe or anything like that. So a character we start today will still be available uh, for that. And, um, so yeah, part of it is getting back into it because I haven't played it for a while, sort of prep work. And also we can start a new character today that we could consider carrying into uh, the 1.0 release and seeing what it is. Or when 1.0 drops, we can play with one of the characters we've already got. Have you seen the Falconeer subclass will be coming? I haven't, I don't know if I've seen, no, I think I did watch a preview video or something for it. Of course, I know it's there because they've had, so the way things work in Last Epoch is they've got, um, they've got these five character classes over here but these five classes each have three subclasses that that's your real class so effectively there's really 15 different classes in the game um and we've known what some of the subclasses were i think falconeer is one of the variants here oh sorry apparently oh no there it is yeah so rogue is the base class but then you master into either blade dancer marksman or falconeer uh so we've known that these were coming for a while but they haven't been available for a bit i think um is it uh the acolyte here that's got the warlock mastery that's not in the game yet I think most of the, one or two of these have all three of the base classes. Yeah, so the Primalist has all three of the base ones, although I think one of them is currently in the current version is a little on the weaker side and definitely needs a revamp. Oh, and I guess the Rune Master is added, I think with 0.9 for the Mage. Um, but I don't think the uh, the Sentinel here, the Paladin type, oh, does have all three, never mind. Um, maybe one of these was also added in 0.9, I, I don't remember. So I guess most of them are, already have their base classes, but not all. Maybe there will be a bite for the faction buff? Eh, yeah, maybe. In which case, well, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. Anyway, I'm going to open up my, uh, ooh, my little see-through can here. Having some club soda, some, or sorry, some ginger ale. It's been very good in my throat this week. Rune Master's incredible. Such a cool class. Really? You haven't played Rune Master? Huh. Paladin looks like Dave Greenvard. You're right. Yeah, the Sentinel over here. Now, I don't have a Sentinel class. In point eight, I did level up a Void Knight, which was very fun. I've not played Forge Guard or Paladin as far as I know. So that's a possibility. Um, I did dabble with uh, Sorcerer. Um, it seems good, but I, I was finding the rotation awkward, at least of the build I went for. Um, I, last I checked, I think Spellblade in point eight might have been really good, and in point nine they, they fixed things that effectively nerfed it that might not have been fun. It'll, all the balance is going to be completely radically changed in 1.0, so we have no idea what things will be like. I haven't played the Rune Master. Maybe, maybe we should? I don't know. Floating middle guy reminds me of Tailson Chaffee? I don't know who that is, or what that's from. Now, a little update for the channel. Um, next Saturday, so February the 17th, I think it is, I will be leaving on a trip and not returning until um, the 26th or 27th. It means we're gonna be missing Saturday, Monday. So this week, there's today, Monday, Wednesday, we're streaming. After that, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Monday. So five streams we're gonna be missing because I am going to be away. We're doing a big family trip extended trip, my, my siblings, their kids, all these things is one big group. Uh, we're doing a big family trip, so I'm gonna be away for a little bit. But we do have th three streams. What Monday and Wednesday will be, I don't know. If we had played Vicky today, Monday, Wednesday, we're probably gonna be Vicky. Now, I'm not sure, maybe maybe we do KSP, maybe we do some Tropico, maybe we do some sort of train game. Maybe we just do my last Epoch, we'll see, we'll play it by ear. So I don't know what Monday and Wednesday will look like. But then, yeah, there'll be a little bit of a stream miss, which breaks my heart, hopefully. Assuming voice holds out, hopefully I will be recording more Dwarf Fortress and more Victoria this week, and hopefully there'll be content through YouTube uh, for the trip, but we'll see how that works out. Even though Surviving Mars and Watt, see, dude, dude, 
I love Surviving Mars so much. Man, oh man, I like that game. How many hours do I have in that? I have a lot. I have like more than you might expect, right? Um, I have 400 hours in Surviving Mars. Uh, I really enjoy that game. We've got a few other survival games and city builders and things like that. There's some things I want to try. Um, what's on my two try list over here? Stellar Settlers, these Doomed Isles, Train Valley, Solar Expanse, Spacecraft with a K. Um, there's a bunch of things I want to try. Someone was just bringing up... Um, I just want to bring up in Discord a second ago. Um, oh, Steam World Builds. Mary brought up Steam World Build that I haven't played in a while. That might be worth taking another look at. Yeah, there's so much potential. Yeah, so so we'll see. New Paradox of like an Alpha. Oh, we played that on Wednesday. I didn't uh, get the video um, uh, uh, processed and uploaded to YouTube yet, but we did play Millennia on Wednesday. Um, I considered playing more today, but because it's limited to just the first three ages, we weren't going to see that much that was new. It would basically just playing the, the game start a few times in a row. And I thought, at least for me, that might feel unsatisfying to keep sort of ending just as you're getting into, like, kind of just the, the end of the, the opening moves of things. It's like, it's like, okay, listen, you've moved five, you're playing chess and you've moved five of your pawns. Okay, the game's got to stop now. Sorry, that's it. Life by you, Paralyze. I mean, there's so much good stuff, yeah. Anyway, so... I'm torn. I have no idea what the Rune man Master involves. An apex among their peers. Rune Masters are mages who take the study of runes to the next level. Tapping into the arcane with a rune's construction, they can alter the flow of magic and even combine runes to create spells with... Oh, right! This guy plays, like, Invoker and Dota, right? Like, where you're doing combos and shit? I'm worried that I might be bad at that. Or maybe it'll be really cool. And the other thing is we could play one of these Stompy Knights. Like, the Void Knight is kind of fun because it's, like, dark paladin here, right? You're just summoning the power of voids and shadows and things like that. It's, like, 40 spells and run. Oof. Oh, I'm worried. Maybe it's awesome. Maybe it's going to be overwhelming. But I don't know, man. All right, maybe we should do a quick little Twitch poll. Um, uh, where's my button for Twitch polls? Manage polls. Um, and of course, like usually when we play these games, people always want us to play summoners, and I love summoners, but we have done that. Like I've played, uh, I've got necromancers, I've got beast summoners, um, so I, I don't want to do that just because we have done it, although those classes are a heck of a lot of fun. Overwhelm <laughs> Quill, got it. <laughs> no, that's what people are going to go for, right? I'm pretty sure, but we'll do the poll just to see, to make sure I've got the vibe right. Um, which class? Um, what's the, uh, the, the base of this call? Just mage? Mage slash... Rune Master Latza. Oh, right. I forgot there's like a massive character limit here. So Mage Slash Rune Master is the lots of crazy spells option, apparently. Um, Sentinel, like, it's like, I don't know what, what we build with. We might go Void Knight. We don't have to pick right away. We don't have to pick the base classes. You get like halfway through the campaign to pick the, uh, the mastery anyway. So Sentinel, like some sort of like Paladin, Void Knight, something i will start the poll sort of suspect people will go for the mages but we'll see homeworld 3 got pushed back to me i've never played any of the homeworld games which is a darn shame vote early vote often big dumb hit things is old well, so um, when I played the Void Knight, it was like spinny, spinny, leave these like like void shadow things everywhere that made shadow clones of myself that all attacked in like, uh, it wasn't a summoning build exactly, but you were making a bunch of clones yourself who were attacking, which was cool. Yeah, but I don't know how the Forge Guard and the Paladin play. But yeah, also don't know the Rune Master. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, it's 62% to 38%, pretty overwhelmingly. We're gonna try the mage. Um, so the question is, what are we going to call our mage? I was kind of ready for the uh, the paladin one. I was like, oh, we could call ourselves the Night Knight or the Night Quill or or something like that. But what is our rune master's name? Tim. I think the name has to be unique for the online mode. So I suspect someone's probably beaten us to Tim. Russell's Quill Master. Quill Manser. The Speller. Sprout. I don't know if he looks like a sprout. Uh, you know who it kind of looks like? Um, uh, 
Who's the guy who plays Hank Pym in like the like the Ant-Man movies? Like big, big name actor that's been around for a while. Rune Quiller, Petrifier. I like Petrifier, Sproutmancer. Michael Douglas, yeah. Doesn't he look like Michael Douglas? Right? <laughs> uh, old model looked like Charles Dance. Oh. Rune Quill Rune, like Run Spot Run. Looks like Sermon. Petrifier is multifaceted. All right, you know what? Petra Fire. I like it. People will think we've just misspelled Petrifier, so it's going to be great. Okay, we'll just play uh, standard mode. So, um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the leagues. I guess you wouldn't choose the leagues now anyway. So if, even if the character makes it into 1.0, and I don't know if it will or not, um, but we wouldn't get to choose the uh, the sort of trade factions that you do. We'll just but we'll just play the default here. That's going to be fine. All right. I am the mage, raised in the scholarly city Welrin, and trained in the arcane arts. I became one of the elders. I took on an apprentice to whom I showed kindness and compassion. One of the other characters. This was folly. I like how they're tied in. Rebellious, entertained dark arts, and was exiled. My guilt over her fate. Drove Only twelve minutes in character creation. Years I spent searching for. We're speedrunning this baby. Only to hear that Welrin was conquered by the Sun God. I'm gonna change the Ewok game here. Now I travel back to Welrin, determined to fix my mistakes. I'm the Rune Master for the first time. Okay. No idea what kind of focus we're going to... Oh, sorry, Sancho. Well, you can go now. I just added a little note. You can tweak to your heart's desire. All right, so we're going to start off. We're going to play as a regular mage. We're well, probably time. Hey, it's like I'm playing Volt in uh, Warframe again. All right, yep. Left click to move. You can play with the gamepad as well. Yada, yada, yada. What happens next might shock you. Should probably more or less speed through this. I know we left some gold behind. I say, is my uh, is my weapon like a wand or anything with range? But no, it's just swing. Oh, right, I forgot about this. At first, the first time I saw this, I thought there was an animation bug, but then I realized, no, no, there's just a really cool animation when he swings. I'm like, oh, there's a glitch. His his weapon's not actually connected to his hand. Ha ha ha, silly. And I realized, no, no, he's using telekinesis to swing his mace around. That was cool. That was cool. He's magic. Yeah, so I've played, so I've started as a mage before that I went into Sorcerer and I played around with like the Meteor Strike and different things like that. What is this? Uh, oh, there's someone to talk to. I didn't see the question mark here. I only saw it on the main map. In the hands of the Fallen Messenger, you find a letter from the Keeper's Council. It is addressed Traveler. to you. Our Heoborian allies informed us that you will attend the peace talks. Raya's war has reached our lands and we are in need of aid. Playing Spellblade is really cool because of the whole telekinetic swing weapons thing. Yeah, we will have to give it a try. I wanted to, but I thought um, all I kept hearing about, at least, and that not may that might not apply to the current patch that's actually running. But I know at some point the Spellblade went from like being awesome to being heavily nerfed, and I mostly just heard people complaining about that. So I was like, oh, maybe I won't play it now. We'll wait until there's another balance sweep. Enjoy your Warframe videos too. I'm really enjoying Warframe. Yeah, and a lot of people I was like. There's the problem now that a bunch of people have said, oh, these these next these couple of quests in particular, like, please record your reaction to it. So now I'm like, great. Now I can't just play for fun. Now I got to now I got to record. Now I've turned this hobby into work again. As keepers, we avoid conflict. We're dedicated to the goddess Atera's memory. That is until Raya forced our hand. He wishes to destroy us and steal Atera's legacy. We can't let that happen. We need Hirot's help. Your help. Now, it's quite possible that the way to um, to do this fast is to just ignore some of these early enemies and just run like crazy. <clears throat> Or it's possible that the speedy thing to do is to kill a critical mass of these to get your first level up. Jeebus! 
so that you can get some abilities. I really need some splash damage, please. Also, I keep trying to hit spacebar to do a um, a dash. Because I've been playing a lot of Grim Dawn since they, uh, what they call it? is it the 1.2 patch? I don't remember what the version is. I think it's 1.2 where they added the like the, the dash evasion button in Grim Dawn. Um, like, I keep having to hit spacebar to do it. I guess um, Diablo 4 also has it. We're gonna set some filters soon. Your video reminded me how good the Fortuna intro song was. I haven't heard it in a while. I had to go listen. I mean, it blew my mind when you like. So you first visit this this place, and there's not a lot of um, in-game cutscenes in Warframe. That's not really how it, it tells its story. Um, but the first time you land, there's a couple of these like locations. The locations that are sort of the hubs for open world areas. They give you a little intro animation. I, I mean, I've only seen a couple so far, uh, but that one goes real hard. Oh, there we go. We've unlocked an ability. I guess it auto-equipped it. Or, yeah, where do we get Fireball from? Um, Because we don't have any of our skill stuff or anything yet, right? We don't have our mastery yet. It just unlocked Fireball. Great. We got some splash attack damage. Lovely. Uh, sorry, I hadn't realized I'd unlocked Fireball yet. I hadn't realized I'd ding level two. Does that mean I have a... Uh, no, I don't have a passive skill yet. We get it at the next level, yeah? So there's a small radius on the Fireball. Ain't much, but it's something... Really looking forward to Soul Frame 2. What is Soul Frame? I don't think I've heard of this. Also, I don't remember running into like a weird burn body in this before. It's possible I haven't played on the latest patch. Bodies are burnt beyond recognition, they were fleeing. Okay. So, what's the damage? So, the DPS on the fireball is higher, it's the same mana cost. And it's got some splash damage? Alright, so I should just be using fireball right now. Wait, it's a spin off a of Warframe by the same depth. Really? Have you seen Synergy in upcoming City Builder similar look to the cardboards? No. Uh, yeah, okay, you know what? There's a lot that's different here from the last time. I'm pretty convinced. So I'm sort of getting my ass kicked. Here. You know what? Um, I do have some crafting material because those are shared by the account. I could just do a microscopic amount of crafting on the items we picked up. That might not be a terrible idea. When you arrived, was there a family? Yeah, this is all new to me. This is all new to me. I didn't realize they changed a bunch of the uh, the game since the last time I played. Um, was it? Was everything it was right? my mistake. They were cornered, and there were so many. They reworked the whole intro section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I've not played this in a while. I can handle Ospricks. I told them to stay back, to let me handle it, and they left. I think our guy looks like kind of a hard case. So, it's a war. We can't save everyone. What good are we if we can't? I mean, no, I'm pretty good. Well, Sorry. actually, I'm not that good yet. I just met you, and it's been a long road. Been a long road. Getting from there to here. What is it? The Enterprise title song? Are you also here for the peace talks? Um, mostly I'm here for the ass kicking. But yes, yes, I am. Good, because so am I. Name's Grail. Since we're both headed the same direction, why don't we go together? Yeah, I could use a disp disposable meat shield. I wonder, which of us will take down more Ospricks? Great song for a bad series. I hated the song at first, but then it grew on me. And then for what, season like three or four, they like change it to like a weird, like a, a rockier cover. And I was like, eh, I don't know. Come, let me watch you fight. All right, so we got uh, Snap Freeze Unlock. Freeze enemy in the code in front of you, lasts for two seconds. Cool, all right, that's gonna be useful. And we got our first passive point. So, um, if you haven't played this before, you get passive points every time you level up, except for level two, so only level three do you start getting them. But fr from that point on, you get a passive point every single level. At first, you just put them in your base class mastery, your mage mastery, but once you do, or sorry, you, yeah, your base class. Then once you do unlock a mastery, what actually happens is you unlock all three of these mastery trees, but 
there's this little chain here. Only the mastery that you choose can you go beyond that. But otherwise, you can invest in any of the three masteries as much as you want. We are going to be unlocking Rune Master this time to see how it is. But um, first, right now, we can only put them in the base. Uh, and secondly, you still have to put at least 20 points in the base to be able to start putting points in the mastery, unless that has changed. Um, uh, but to do and respecking is quite easy in this game. It's very nice. It encourages um, experimentation, which is really good. Uh, I like a lot of things about Path of Exile, a lot of things, but the lack of sort of convenient and easy respecking for new players is a big detriment to the game, I think, because it makes it difficult for new players to experiment and figure out what they like to play. Technically, you can you can do things with um, with the with orbs of regret or whatever. Um, and in the uh, the standard league, you get your you kind of get a free respec every three or four months, kind of whenever a new league starts, uh, because things change in the passive tree, so they offer you a free respec. But that's not that's not a convenient and let's experiment and try different things style of respec in uh, Path hey, of Exile, pay attention which is subscribe. sort of one of the detriments to that game, despite being great in lots of other ways. Uh, one of the things I like about um, um, Grim Dawn, for example, is, yeah, it's it's quite easy to respect some things and to try some different mechanics, but you still feel committed. One of the things I didn't like about Diablo 3 is it never felt like you were committed to anything. You could sort of swap your abilities and your runes around whenever you want, so I never felt like I had, like, my character that I invested in somewhere along the way. Um, and Diablo 4, I didn't end up playing much of. So, anyway, this first one, it's not going to do much. We've got access to Scholar. We've got access to Elementalist, which is going to increase our um, elemental damage. Scholar gives us health and mana. And down here, we've got Arcanist, which is going to give us Intelligence, which a lot of our abilities will scale off of Intelligence, so that's quite nice. And then it gives us Lightning and Fire Resist. Once we've got five points in this first level, we'll be able to invest points in the second tier, and so on and so forth. The other thing is, once we've invested five points in here, we'll unlock the Glacier ability. Then at 10, we get Disintegrate, and again, so on and so forth. Um, looks like Elementus is also a prereq for Arcane Currents and for Arcane Flames. For now, I don't know what really matters. Um, it actually might just be convenient for us to get just some Intelligence and Resistance or some Health and Mana just for general survivability as opposed to just pure damage. Early game, usually you're not too threatened, so maybe just some pure damage is the way to go to just help us clear content a little bit faster. And we can respect that fairly easy if we change our minds, so that's going to be okay. The real specialization is going to start next level here when we can specialize our skills. And that was like the first thing that really impressed me about this game. The second thing that really impressed me about this game is the crafting. And actually, yeah, I should do a little bit of that. Um, so some of our items, not our starter gear over here, it has zero fortune potential, but the stuff we've picked up has a little bit of fortune potential. So if we do control F over here, we can open up the forge. We can piece, put a piece of gear in there and we can just add some modifiers using some crafting material that I've picked up over the course of other playthroughs here. Um, and we can add some, some stats to this. So what might be we looking for? on this character. I mean, I think it's too early to um, optimize around a particular element or anything like that. Um, maybe just something like cast speed right now is gonna be the way to go. Um, or, I mean, we could just stack a bunch of intelligence, which is gonna give us all, all sorts of like increased benefits to a few things that we're doing. Wouldn't be the worst. Mm -hmm. And faster Pew Pew is not bad. Um, if we take a look at our uh, skills over here, so you can see Fireball scales. It's it. I, I really like the way this game is presented. Every one of your skills has the scaling tag section. It tells you what this skill, um, what keywords of skill is based on. So Fireball will be improved by anything that improves fire effects, spell effects, or intelligence. So it scales with intelligence. And if we look at our character sheet over here, we can see that intelligence gives us ward retention, which is like um, kind of a, a shield ability, uh, and proof skills that rely on study of magic. So like it doesn't give us anything necessarily too much in and of itself, except that uh, as a wizard type person, I think most, if not all of our abilities will scale off of int. I will, I, you know what, I'll probably just do that. So I'm just gonna go in crafting mode with gloves here, and I'm just gonna add some intelligence and we will use the Glyph of Hope to hopefully not use Fortune Potential, so we throw in a little bit of that. And then as a suffix, maybe, I mean, uh, just actually giving us some extra health wouldn't be bad, or Endurance, or Ward. There's something funky going on with my fonts here. Like, I don't know, I've never seen that before, and I don't know if there was a weird resolution thing or something going on. No clue. All right, so that's as much as I can go if I added anything more to this then it would um, it, it would need me to be higher level than I am. So 
Uh, what we want is we want some movement speed. And actually, I don't care if it's a prefix or suffix here. So. I'm just going to throw that on. We're not going to use too many resources because we're going to be replacing this gear quickly, but for now it's going to be useful. So in theory, we should be doing a little bit more. Faster boots are fast, yeah. Font is a bug slated to be fixed in one final. Okay, so it's not actually a setting thing because I like, uh, I messed around with like, is it a resolution thing, full screen, borderless? It's only in that that particular font that shows up in a couple of areas that's got that weird, weird shade going on. But okay, if it's just a known bug, then I'm not going to worry about it. So, already you saw a little example of crafting, and I really like it. So, um, at, so like in Diablo, like in Path of Exile, like in Grim Dawn, objects will have, can have uh, prefixes and suffixes. Not an uncommon thing in ARPGs. Um, all the items in this game have a maximum of two prefixes and two suffixes. Um, so yeah, just a total of four modifiers overall. And they can go from, let's say rank one to rank five. Technically you can go beyond that. Those are um, leaf epic. I can't remember the terminology they use in this game. Technically it goes beyond that, but not really trapped. We got our first little boss going on here. Um, and so you can craft for those. And that feels very convenient. It's very intuitive. It feels powerful. There's some RNG because what happens with the crafting is you can choose what you're adding, but items have a certain amount of forging potential. And every time you um, you modify it, it uses some of the forging potential, a random amount of it. So it's both the crafting is both deterministic. You know what you're going to get, but it's also random because of the forging potential cost. You don't know ultimately how much you're going to be able to put on. So you might. You, you might not be able to craft the perfect god tier item, you know, the first time. It might take you a few attempts to do that. Um, and I, I quite like that. The other thing we've got is a loot filter system over here, where we can create filters that are... There's no identifying of items in this game. So whereas Path of Exile um, has a pretty substantial loot filtering system, because items aren't automatically identified, you can't set a filter for, listen, just show me things that have, you know, movement speed or crit damage or all these things. But in here you can, so you can uh, filter out the loot pretty strongly to only show you what's relevant to you, um, which is great. But also you can set up a filter to also, you know, relevant to me, but also anything strong for maybe another character as well. And yeah, we unlock the skill specialization that will do the Their camps are neither chosen nor abandoned on a whim. There's a pattern to how they scurry. Wish we had an ARPG version of Baldur's Gate 3. Well, have you played the console games that were referred to as Baldur's Gate? But we're not Baldur. They're not like, they're not part of the regular Baldur's Gate franchise. But there is a console, what was it called? Dark Alliance? Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, which is sort of a ARPG. It's a kind of dated, um, and, but I think they did come out with a PC port. You know, I can't get that one little piece of hair under control, so I better, I better be hat myself. I'm feeling a little bit derpy with it. But I really enjoyed um, Dark Alliance way back in the day on uh, on console. I don't know how well it stands up today, but I instructed my soldiers to investigate the abandoned camps. Invariably, they're near shrines devoted to the eldest of gods. Each one was as empty as the last. It does sound like Sini Beanie. The meager signs of the keeper's presence. Dark Alliance was excellent fun as a couch co-op. You're hundred percent right. They're not guarding the ruins. They're traveling between them, over and over. They must be moving with them. It'll be as simple as burning these vermin to ash. Raya wills it. So, skill specialization. This is where the real meat and potatoes of this game comes in. Um, as you level up your character, you will unlock spell sp uh, skill specialization slots. And these will basically, once you've got all five of them unlocked, these will be the five skills you're basically using on your character. And this can dramatically change how these skills work. So for example, if we were to put Lightning Blast in here, so we get a whole different skill tree and your skill levels kind of independently of you, uh, the, uh, it can go up to level 20, the skill. It is going to be capped based on your character level via math or something like that. Um, 
But yeah, and these can be quite transformative. So uh, I haven't actually, I wasn't planning on playing mage. I haven't really looked at these powers, so I'm not sure what we're looking at, but uh, arcing power, yeah, baby. This is the, I want to feel like Palpatine thing. So this lets our lightning blast chain to additional targets, which I like. An additional time for each lightning blast you've directly cast recently up to a maximum. So clicking on this, we get an additional chain, one per point, and then additional chains per recent direct cast is one, which scales it up. Uh, so that all of a sudden changes how it, it plays. Then let's say we went down here, right? This just increased shock chance. And then over here, supercharged foes. Now, or flows. Now in this chain lightning, this lightning blast, instead of doing lightning, now it does cold damage. Completely transform how our character works. Now we're doing something very chill and we could focus a lot of our abilities on doing cold stuff. Uh, over here, hey, more chain lightning. Maximum chains per point, plus one. Increase the mana cost per cast, but now it turns it into more and more and more of a splash damage kind of thing. Um, you can also respect this. The way skills and your passives respect work differently. Passive respects are basically instant. You have to do it in town. Technically costs you like a microscopic amount of money. It, it doesn't matter, um, but you can just change your passives. Your skills though, if you decide to undo things, you then have to re-level up the skill. So you can do it any time. Experimentation is encouraged, but it still feels like there's kind of a cost. You can't just do it willy nilly. You can't just sub, you know, for like, oh, the boss fight, because you will have to do some amount of re-leveling with the skill to get back your old power. That's really good. <clears throat> I just came on your wish list for a while. Um, I was, I was impressed when I first played it. I was a little disappointed at how slow certain bugs were to fix. Um, I'm really hoping a lot for a 1.0 release. Um, I feel like it's something that should be very accessible to new ARPG players in a way that Path of Exile definitely isn't, for example, um, but hopefully has enough crunch to be worthwhile into the late game and things like that. Frontloaded here is like just more damage. Your chains do less, so this is going to be a lot better for single target damage. Anyway, so that's that's looking at um, the Lightning Blast, right? Let's say we were to look at uh, Free Snap. So Free Snap right now doesn't do any damage. Can we make it do damage? Chance to chill, more mana efficiency, freeze point, casting speed's quite nice. Knockback all of a sudden. I mean, I don't know if this ever does get added some damage. Ooh, lots of range thrown in. Applies on hit effects. Spell cold damage plus five. That freeze hits and deals spell cold damage. Ah. And then more damage. And then we transform it to lightning because why not, right? So you've got, again, you've got this idea that your skill, oops, your skills don't necessarily stay where we are. And we've got these little helper symbols on our side. So you can see Lightning Blast has got a little lightning icon and it's got this grayed out like frost icon, this cold icon, this snowflake. Same thing with Fireball is it's got fire lit up, but it could be lightning. So we could go and change everything to just be all lightning all the time. Yeah, I don't know if someone can clarify what's going to happen at 1.0 if the online characters are getting wiped or not, because I don't know. Le Elemental Nova, I know, has got some great potential. So this does a Nova around you. But I know what you can do is you can have it... Um, you can have this auto cast on teleport, which I guess isn't something part of Elemental Nova itself, but rather when we unlock teleport over here, it has the ability to, when we teleport, it leaves Novas um, where we arrive and then also where we depart and then also in between. So you can have a character that all they do is teleport around dropping Novas automatically cast. And there's a lot of skills that will trigger other skills as a chain effect, which is kind of nifty. I heard that nothing is wiped, but I can't, I didn't, I thought I heard that nothing was getting wiped either, but you know, you, you can't necessarily depend on that because every now and end they'll discover that, okay, hold on, something's not good. Oh, Pierce, that's interesting. So this fireball would go through other enemies and potentially hit Mulder one. You know what? Let's just go for the Palpatine build for now. It's very simple. I'm just going to put a point in uh, arcing power here. There we go. So now our chain lightning will arc between things and that'll be good. But we do have this, uh, this elemental Nova as a possibility, which is cool. So one of my big complaints about playing this multiplayer is the loading time between zones was apocalyptic for I'm assuming what was happening is like the host was like generating the zone and then had to like transmit it to all the other players in some way. But it's like, couldn't you just randomly generate a seed, send the seed and have like, I don't actually know what was going on behind the scenes, but 
in multiplayer, and maybe this is fixed now, because again, I haven't played on the current patch, um, but the loading time between zones in multiplayer only was huge for some weird reason. Very frustrating. There tend to be a lot of like movement stutters and like sync issues and stuff like that. Um, Sounds yeah, like their leaders waiting up at the shrine. The keepers have done well. This yeah, this is all new to me. Different from home. Who are the keepers? A group tied closely with our goddess Etera. They've been in debt. Uh, no, there's an offline mode. But why we do not know. I like the online mode because, um, you know, I want to be able. To, if you play offline, then it, like your offline characters are purely offline. Your online characters you can play by yourself. Although I think when you're in a town like this, you might see other players running around. Uh, and if you want to group up with other people, your friends or whatever, then those would have to be online characters. Um, unlike Grim Dawn, where your characters are kind of all offline, but then you can still play multiplayer with them. Even their names. Well, what do they keep? Do they adhere to another god or just her? <clears throat> it's these mysteries that interest. Yeah, I don't have any problems playing solo with the online character. Sure, right. It's only when I'm in actual multiplayer with another party, and again, that I haven't played in the latest patch where I'd have these issues. Now. We speak to the Keeper Council. Speaking of, I must head there now. Feel free to look around. I'll see you shortly. Oh, Here wants pages. offered protection. More than protection. An alliance. But the truth is, we know little about him or his people. Friscoborn, it's an action RPG. The council which, yes, him? is Diablo-like. Prospect one. But it's a he's pretty wide purpose. and varied genre these days. Atera made him just as she made us keepers and gave him a role by her side. He's the guardian of his people, and he does his job well. Prospect two. He cares for his people. Like the goddess herself, he extends his heart to all who need support. He forms alliances, wanting to stand united. Meanwhile, Raya wishes to tear this world asunder. Prospect three. Yeah, I wonder who this voice actor is. These people are warriors. Hair Borean fighters put us to shame. We fight because it is necessary while they relish in it. I'll take on what is your profession? Blade any day. Thus, I propose we accept this alliance. It is not in our nature, but we. Alright, so the keepers are like hippy dippies, pacifists. Without heroes helping. But they need some stronger people. All right. Ooh. I like where this waypoint is here in the middle of this, uh, like kind of an auditorium, but with the flowing water. This is really nice. Yeah, everything about this map, this entire zone, like all of Act 1, I guess, is completely new. It's very nice. Hello. Oh, these are players. <laughs> Grail was just telling me of your battle. I am Lena, one of the Keeper's Council. One of two. There should be more of us here. What happened? They're gone. Both us and I remain, and he's not here. As such, I must ask for your help. We're here for an alliance, not favors. Our chances of success are slim. The character's gonna be such a jerk. Other steps must be taken. Where's the evil druid who wants to close off the, dro the grove, right? Both us is busy checking on our sacred artifacts. We're protectors of Atera's history. And right now, they're in danger. What can you tell us about this artifact? Not much, Is it a shard of a we'll time-traveling rock? Alliance. But I'm doing you a favor. You are, and I'm sorry, but this is how it must be. Their secrecy keeps them safe. Even now, the Ospreks swarm all of our sacred vaults. I've already asked Grail to check one down in the mountains. There is another up north, where Balthus is. Could you make sure he's safe? There's word of a drake patrolling the skies. That's okay. A drake is just a male duck, so that's fine. All right, can do. And our alliance is secure. We'll There's uh, so many people, <laughs> so many stories of people uh, starting um, Dwarf Fortress and planning their embark. When you get the animals that you can bring with you, they see drakes and like, yes, I'm going to bring a bunch of drakes. We're going to have a drake army. It's going to be wonderful. And then they get into the game and they find out a drake is just a male duck. It's duck season. So, yeah, you don't get some of these loading times in offline mode. I th I'm, I'm guessing something is being generated on the server for that or something, but it's clearly something could use optimization. Uh, this environment is gorgeous. Definitely different. 
Okay, yeah, we can portal. All right. All right. Is it chaining? All right, it is chaining. Um, mostly I'm getting my ass kicked. There we go. Let's freeze all these. Well, we got a nice group of people, so... Whoa! Let's say we can do some, uh... Elemental Novas. Now, the blue item there is an item that already has one modifier in it. The You will see blue and yellow in here, which, um, if you think of things like um, Path of Exile or Grim Dawn, you might think of a magic item and a rare item. There's mechanically no real difference between them in this game. That just shows you whether it's got... So blue items have one or two... Um, affixes. I was like, what's the collective thing for a prefix and a suffix? Affix. Blue items have one or two affixes. Yellow items have three or four affixes. That's kind of it. Theoretically, I mean, generally speaking, yellow items are more likely more useful because they have more of them, but theoretically a blue item might have affixes that happen to be totally relevant to you and therefore turn out to be better. Anyway, those violent plants. Man, all plants are violent. They got, plants have issues. Didn't you know? You know what? I honestly think this elemental Nova might actually be our best bet for like early leveling here. Is that a quill hog? I feel attacked. An A fix is when you need to get your fix, we don't care where it comes from. Yeah, maybe we just uh walk up to things and then explode. Not too late, we can change our spec here. Throw an elemental nova instead, and damage an area. I think we might want to give it an element. Maybe we still like latch onto lightning as our vibe. 20% more critical strike chance than other. We can go like crit lightning. All right. What happens next may shock you. I don't know how many times I'm gonna make that joke. It's gonna be a lot. Still hot. All right. Oh, someone told me in Warfare there's a faction called the Quills. I'm clearly gonna have to go meet them. Um, I don't remember if there's a, um, a pickup hotkey in this. Copper Circlet of Sparks. That sounds like something that's got my name all over it. Oh. Alright, running a little low on mana. So I'm having to resort to melee. That's some sort of barbarian savage. Pick up these health pods as well. Oh. I should fireball my single targets right now. Alright, we're definitely gonna have to start setting some loot filtering, but we have to figure out what, what kind of filter we want. Uh, oh, Sparks is Lightning Resistance. This would give us Vitality, which is nice. I like the little um, the little breakdown at the bottom. You can see if I swap here, I would gain two Vitality, but lose Lightning Resistance. Vitality is more hit points. It's probably generally going to be better. It's got less forging potential if we want to craft. I don't know if we will. Uh, increased damage over time. We don't currently do damage over time. Right. I may as well wear that. It's a little bit better. Um, I don't believe that selling in this game gives you that much. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, I better pick up everything and then um, bring it to town to sell or whatever. It's like, no, no. Set an aggressive loot filter is fine. Pick up and then pick up what you what, what shows itself at that point. And then if it turns out to be, you know, like when and then when you get to town, look at all the stuff, see if anything's an upgrade. And if it's not, then maybe sell it at that point. But I don't think it's the sort of game where you're like, oh, I got to pick up everything and then sell it. Oh, I didn't check the blue wand. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Of course, of course, of course. So that is interesting. Yeah, this wand. I forgot. I, I didn't look at the uh, intrinsic stuff. I just looked at the modifier. So this has the um, blighted prefix. So it's got the 18% increased damage over time. But the Rowan wand intrinsically has plus three spell damage, minus three spell cost versus the scepter, which has the spell damage as well, but melee damage we don't care about. So yeah, we should do this. It does indeed make my fireball free. It also makes my elemental Nova a fair bit cheaper. I mean, it's still got a cost, but yeah. Now we literally have unlimited power. Um, I'm actually wondering if, you know, it's fine. We'll, uh, we'll keep going into elementalist here. Make decisions later on. Completely forgot about the unique stuff. Fireball, 
about you. And see, before the Elemental Nova was doing like multicolored rings, so it was doing three types of damage. Now it's only doing lightning damage, although it's doing slightly more of it. Yeah, selling items nearly worthless, yeah. And a lot more um, ARPGs are really um, trying to move to that because the idea of like having to grab everything and then make frequent trips to the town isn't fun. It breaks up the uh, the action. Uh, the 1.2 patch of Grimdon. Again, I think that's I'm thinking I'm remembering the version number right. The, the new patch that dropped not that long ago and did a fairly significant transformation of Grimdon, which is great. Um, reduce the amount of drops reduce the amount of money you get from selling things, but increase the amount of passive money you get, because that was exactly the idea. The, the Grim Dawn reduced the number of drops, but increased the quality of drops. So in theory, you're still getting as much good stuff. Um, we're kind of getting our ass kicked here. This character's feeling very weak right now. I wonder if I shouldn't be using fire against a guy called the Burning Sky. How much are we hitting with for? 190, well, that was a crit. Okay, 95, my lightning. Well, my lightning's still lower. Does it have faster cast time? No, because the DPS is still lower. So even if it was a faster cast time, that would have been factored into the DPS. Ooh, there we go, our first yellow item. At the very least, we should probably set up a filter that, um, so I got some pre-mades, but I'm going to create a new filter over here. Uh, so this is going to be called the uh, Rune Master Livestream Filter. And then oh, we can give it a symbol. Yeah, okay. So um, we're going to add a rule. First of all, if um, if something is a set item or unique or an exalted, just always show it. And then we can give it a we can give it a color. We'll give it the um, I don't know. We'll give it a dark purple, and then emphasize it so it's nice and big. Great. And then um, what we can do is I will set a hide, um, a hide rule for non-magic. What I tend to do, yeah, so normal items over here will get hidden. Oh, I did not lock that in. There we go. Uh, normally what I do is I set a bunch of shows and then at the end I just put a hide all. Anything that makes it to the bottom would get hidden because it, it gets done in order. Um, but there we go. So at the very least, right now, I don't want to see normal items. Just show me magics or whatever. Uh, I think you can still hit a key, yeah, X, to still show what, um, every, everything. Yeah, I think the Inton Resistant node is probably the way to go. I think I agree with you here. I'm a bit busy. Yeah, yeah okay. They're building something. Sure. Whatever, you give me an opportunity to kill more stuff. I think next time I go to town, I will do a swap to the, uh, woo! All right, I think we've got to use our freeze a little bit more. Oh, there's a cooldown. Oh, getting your ass kicked, we're gonna die. There's our first death. Wow! That's probably why we need the resistance. I do not remember having a difficult time with this at all previously, but maybe I'm just bad at playing this wizard over here. I also may have made a bad choice about what to uh, specialize in first. I, I probably have some uniques I could grab from my bank too, but I kind of don't want to do that right now. You guys are gonna like uh, donate a bit for every death, right? Or something like that? That's gonna get expensive real fast. <laughs> oh, I gotta go down this way. Yeah, I did pick a skill that requires going to melee range, that's true. I mean, the, the thing is, the specialization isn't going to matter too much right now. Like, one point isn't going to radically change anything about most of your skills. Oh, blow up the railing. I think I just walked out. I thought there was something clickable on the wall there. As Poe doing, I'm pretty sure Path of Exile is still going real well. Um, I was recently watching a video of someone playing it. Um, I can't remember what the channel name was, but it was someone uh, someone, someone who'd played like a bunch of Diablo. We'd never played Path of Exile before, so they're reading it blind. There's actually a bunch of people who were doing that same thing. Um, and there's a bunch of things that have changed since last time I played. Like when you open the passive tree, each like 
circle group of passives had some sort of like button you can click inside for like another pick when you completed. It's like, hey, that wasn't in there last time I played. I think it's hard to argue with the resistance intelligent node, um, unless you've got your uh, your resistances capped on something else, just because it's increasing your DPS and your defense simultaneously. Whereas I've just picked pure damage nodes. And usually in action RPGs, the number one thing is you pick stuff that helps you survive. Now, admittedly, healing faster helps you survive longer, but usually the biggest problem is if you're dead, you can't DPS. So we've actually got the ability to put a second point into our skill specialization now. Um, I might still go into Lightning Nova. More area is kind of tempting. And then, yeah, if we move up here, oh, it starts to become able to channel, which is interesting. It shrinks the area a lot, though. Novas per second. Oh, five Novas per second while channeling. I don't know if that's where I want to go. Spark charges. Chance to grind spark charges. Oh, those are quite fun. Yeah, they linger after a while. Sparky sparks buff. What about down here? Oh, this gives us ward per kill. This might increase our durability. What's this? Overcharge? Chance to become overcharged. Overcharge Nova's shock enemies have a larger area of effect. Luminaire and the one that lets you cast Nova on your mouse make for stupid fun. Oh! Um... Right, you're saying where it's no longer centered on yourself. So you can, you can just channel it in an area somewhere. Where is that modifier? Because it's not going to be here. It's not there. It's not there. It must be another. It must be a one pointer somewhere in the tree. Under one of the different elements. Ah, arcane projection. Elemental Nova is now cast at the target location instead of around you. It's interesting. You have to go back down the lightning Nova one and the fire Nova one. But then you get Luminaire, and then you get this, and then you just channel it in a zone. Hmm. Luminaire is a spell from Chrono Trigger. Was that the one that um, uh, that Chrono gets that basically is like, that's what you just use to like do every fight forever and ever? Yeah, okay. I guess if I do this, it'll probably re-enable both Lightning and Fire. It will give you more damage, and then I could move down to be able to cast it not centered at myself. Maybe it's worth doing that. Gives us some penetration. All right, let's... I, I don't know what it does when it does two elements again. Is it back to doing... Oh, it alternates! Ah! Could help us get around people who have a particular resistance as well. You know what? Um, I was going to say, we, we just passed a... Uh, Fast travel point. I do want to go to town. I will change it to pick up the resistances in the fast travel. Picking up, I think a So let me do that. We're going to start putting points on Arcanist instead for a little resistance, then the intelligence. We could still leave one point in Elementalist. Uh, we need one point in Elementalist to access either Arcane Currents or Arcane Flames. Sometimes you need more. Like here, you can see uh, three dots over here. So you need three dots in Warden to be able to access Silver Rune. Well, three dots in Warden or in Sun and Storms will give you access to Silver Rune, for example. The, um, the skill trees have exactly the same. I thought I was told it. Um, let's take a look. Okay. Toss this. We don't do damage over time. We don't do melee crits, so we don't need this either. We're still not doing damage over time. I don't really need the strength as far as I know, but these would still seem like they might be an extra upgrade. Um, we can probably filter out some of these bases that we don't care for. Enemies don't have resistance in the campaign. Yeah, but uh, penetration will still give them negative resist, right? Although negative resists, well, I may be, first of all, I might be wrong about that for enemies. Now, as a player, um, maxing out resistances in most ARPGs tends to be very important. For that it's a little less of a problem in this game compared to others um, because of the way that negative resistance is uh, One of the issues is math is negative percentages aren't really well defined mathematically. There's a couple of different ways you can interpret them. Like, if you have negative 100%, does that mean you take... Whoa! Okay, I gotta dodge that shit. Uh, does that make you take 
infinite damage? Double damage? Like, how, how, how do you resolve that? Um, because it's not actually, like, mathematically well-defined. Oh, jeez. I think I probably want to get out of there, too. Yeah, see? The resistances here would be so valuable. So, um, if penetration, does it negate resistances? Like, does it put it negative if some, you're hitting something with no resistances? Or does it still have value? Hey, we got our first try. Cool. And... All right. Sabotage the golem. Cool. Excellent. Groovy. Yeah, taking items to sell from the gold, not worth it. I mean, you get some, and as a, like, absolute brand new character, getting a few extra bucks early on to fund maybe some respec might have some value, but yeah, generally speaking, no. And even in games where you get decent value from selling things, oftentimes it's still not worthwhile because it's better to just, just keep killing faster rather than stopping and going to town all the time. All right, they're gone. All right, uh, go back to camp. Hey, we got an extra passive point. Great, we'll throw it in there. And then we've unlocked the glacier ability. Uh, creates three successively larger ice explosion in the target direction. Each explosion deals more damage than last. We also unlock the mana strike at some point. This is a melee attack, which I don't really want to use. Um, we could consider throwing in um, Glacier and seeing how it feels like. Um, you know what? We're not really using Lightning Blast despite the fact that it was kind of fun. Oh, I don't hate that. Fools. Fools. Oh shit, that took a lot of mana. That took a lot of mana. Oh, what I should do? Oh, I guess Mana Strike is on my uh, left click here. Um, oh, it's a Mana Strike regenerate mana? What well, cost nothing. Okay. Um, I should probably change my binds here. Okay, it costs 62. That is insanely expensive. Chill. Ah, the shard! There you go. We can start doing time traveling soon. Hit the symbol from them, left me alone, thinking I was dead. Take it, unlock the door to shard chamber. Please help about this. Oh. All right. Oh, cool. Password points again. Um. Oh, I'm gonna. Every three seconds, your next elemental spell deals increased damage as a chance to slow enemies on hit. That is quite cool. And then the reactive ward, when you drop below 70% health, you gain a burst of ward based on your maximum health. I mean, ward is good, because again, it's like just an extra hit point bubble around you. But yeah, I was thinking it would be great with Glacier. Um, is it for passives? I mean, it's already dealing a lot of damage. But the extra slow, because I think Glacier is already kind of slowing things down through the chill. Things be quaking. I do have the screen shake turned off, although I think they were getting a little bit from there. I, I've got it turned off for like spells, um, just because usually when I'm like streaming or, or recording or stuff, usually you get a request from someone to uh, to turn off screen shake. So yeah, one thing that's interesting about this, yeah, my max mana is 60. This costs 62. You can still cast it though, because in this game you can go into the negative manas, but then you can't cast. Well, you've got negative mana, you can't cast, but as long as you got positive mana, you can. But as soon as I go to one, I can cast this again. Which, I mean, is sort of effectively the same as if our mana pool was just bigger. Perfectly cromulent uh, sort of solution there. And I kind of like this, just kind of running around. Well, I guess I can still be fireballing, because it costs me nothing. It's one. But I can also focus... And, like, it, it, this, the glacier doesn't have a cooldown, although it effectively does because of the mana cost. These longer mana cost things aren't bad for these fights because you can mostly focus on like just dodging and avoiding problems. These shards, as soon as they click on one, it's gonna back them up the others, which is nice. Those are your crafting tools. Once I decide for the keeper's movements, the vaults will eat. What yeah. would be the game's gotten a lot easier now that we have glacier. So what happens if we change the specialization? I mean I could have looked at the glacier specialization first. But what do you got here? Whirlpools. Each of a glacier's explosion has a chance to create an ice vortex. Last for four seconds. Deal spell damage over time. Okay. And then we start giving the rhyme buff. Um, I can't remember if there's a way to lock this so I can mouse over the rhyme buff. There's built-in help and stuff. We can reference that. But again, right now, oh, increased chill chance. So chill is the thing that slows down enemies, and I think like. 
you can maybe freeze them with this or can lead there. Just kind of constantly slowing down enemies is pretty good. Moderate chilling. Middle-sized explosion deals more damage. Chance to chill. Endless frost. Chill chance granted by this tree is doubled. Glacier hits deal more damage to chilled enemies. Smallest hill ch hit ch chill chance. Largest one. Okay. Freeze rate. Glacier's explosion occur in reverse order. Breaking point. Cost less mana and deals more damage. Okay. Yeah, small, middle, large explosions deal more. Mortitas Bane. Hit damage against rare and bosses. Because this is inherently kind of good, it feels like, for packs because it does AV, but extra boss damage is interesting. What is this? All glaciers explosion occur at target location. Glacier, glaciers critical hits no longer deal extra damage compared to non-critical strikes. So it doesn't spread out the same way. Ward Snowblink. Teleport. When you directly cast Glacier, you're teleported to the target location. As long as the location is accessible, does not count as casting teleport skills, not affected by teleport skill. Also gains a cooldown and now counts as traversal skill. It has a three second cooldown, but does a teleport. That, like the, the transformation that you can go with these skills is fascinating. Oh, Lesher Glacier makes it super cheap, but we lose the biggest explosion. This starts to increase the cost again, but makes that middle explosion more, which just makes it go a lot faster because then just one, two explosion. One, two, one, two, instead of one, two, three. Huh. Lesser Glacier, what you need to Yeah, maybe. You know what? I in nothing else, I'm going to go Breaking Point because I think that's fine. And yeah, we'll we'll probably put a point into Lesser Glacier and then see how that is. But you'll notice Glacier's just level one. I only get one point over here. It will level up very quickly to catch up to where it should be, though. This way. You're here to help. We all speak slave. Can you craft something and increase your mana? Yep. The only thing I don't think you can do I don't think mana regen is available as a stat in this game. I, I might be wrong about that. I might be just completely batshit crazy. There's no mana potions though in this game. One of the things they wanted to do is balance around kind of a, it, 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 mana regen is a stat, okay. But they want to manage around not having to constantly chug to power your abilities. Um, because that can happen a lot in ARPGs where your mana regen rate is basically just how fast you can use your mana pots like Diablo 2 or just if there's a cooldown. Um, like in other ARPGs, you know, how quickly you can use that as your regen. They do want you to have to rely on that. You still need the emergency button and some health potions, although you can't carry a lot of them. But yeah, no, you're right. Mana regen is, I'm being silly here. Also, I think there's like mana on hit that you can do and different things like that. Pose really bad with flask piano, yeah. Protect the shark! All right, we'll protect the shark. Listen, uh, just chill, wait. Survive. Hello, bird people. Woo! That was a big radius on that big explosion, actually. I didn't realize how large that is. Ooh. Some fireballs here while we... Met. Or I guess, yeah, I guess I can... Yeah, it returns 15 mana if it hits an enemy. Wow. Okay. Then just right-click on people to regenerate mana. one of our guardians here. Oh, this is the boss. The character that I got the highest level with, and this was pre this patch, was um, the Lich. Um, that was pretty crazy because it was all, it was all based on like this low, low life build that was enforced. Like I'd toggle on a power and it would cap my life at like, I don't know, 30% of its normal maximum. But while and while I was at low life, all my abilities did like stupid huge amounts of damage. And I had tons of life regen. So I was at low life, but I was constantly uh, leeching more life. It was really fun. And I like my pet builds as well. But we've reinforced our walls, supplied our men and taken out dozens of them. The howling monster circling the vault. 
Yeah. So, lovely. so how big is the skill tree? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna skip tell you what, Um There's the passives, which are not skills. Right now, although investing in the passive the trees does get you more. There's the base class one, and then uh, later on we'll unlock the spellblade, rune master, and sorcerer tree. And whichever of these masteries we actually pick, we will be able to unlock the full amount of it. So we're gonna go rune master because I've never played it. So we're gonna lock everything over here, but we'll have access to all of this and all of this and all of this as passives. And then for actual skills, you are going to specialize in five skills, and each skill has its own skill tree as well, which I really think that's a cool system. I cut that guy up, but I, I kind of want to just go Since further into the game keep here. Us full. <laughs> Sorry, we're not going to get all our lore. I, I don't think, especially at this stage of things, I don't think this game has infinite build um, uh, variety. A bunch of that will be very dependent on how many transformative unique items there are. So like in Path of Exile and Red Dawn, in this game, unique items aren't, they're not more powerful than, than rares that you can find or craft, um, but they tend to be more transformative. They do, they do weird shit that changes inherently how your your skill works. Okay, Flame Ward's gonna dramatically help our survival. We're gonna have to like keep our uh, um, And so the biggest variety of builds will come not necessarily from the skill specialization tree, although certainly, but how many build enabling uniques there might be. I'm just gonna keep dumping points on Arcanist for now. Figure out. Arcanist isn't gonna be bad. Okay, ever since getting this glacier skull, I'm feeling a lot better. Now, nothing's, I think, ever going to be thrown, possibly literally ever, 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 Path of Exile still variety. It's just nuts. Um, Grim Dawn also has a lot of great build variety. Um, partially because of its great egg like, skill trees, but a lot of it uh, comes from... Uh, Grim Dawn has a lot of unique items. Um, I can't remember, it was like seven, eight, nine hundred unique items. I think maybe, or am I gonna, I'm trying to, trying to remember. I recently did the stat crunch for it, and I can't remember what it was. But yeah, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of unique items. Uh, on par with uh, Path Exile. They both have about the same number of unique items. And they do um, fairly dramatically change your character. Oh, I'm trying to pick up the health potion because I'm thinking of different games, but I don't that. So you don't even have to pick up health potions. They auto pick up if you got space. Yeah, Grim Dawn's itemization is huge. You got the constellation system, um, and I love that. Like Grim Dawn, just like Titan Quest, and I'm very excited for Titan Quest too. I'm also excited Grim Dawn is getting an expansion this year as well. Um, like those games, you ha you pick two classes, and you're a combination of those two. And sure so that gives you tons of the variety by and itself. Sure the and then, yeah, safe. all the build enabling uniques that, like, just change how some of your abilities work and things like that. So, um, currently in this current version over here. Are you, done? Are you good? Oh. Um, there's not as many options. How many will they be at 1.0? And then, you know, give it time to mature. Most of those, like, Path of Exiles, like, over 10 years old, Grim Dawn, same sort of thing. Right. Okay, I think we're... Oh, return to the camp. Good, because I want to respec here. So, you know, we'll, we'll give it some time to mature. How linear is this overall? I think very much like the other ARPGs, the campaign itself is is fairly linear. Um, and then what is the endgame going to be? Well, so Path of Exile, again, is sort of the king of endgame. Um, with the mapping stuff, there's just way more to do. The big issue with Path of Exile is the accessibility and the grindiness of it. Um, I really like Grim Dawn. Uh, my big critique of Grim Dawn, so I think Grim Dawn's maps are gorgeous. I think its story is great. I think its character building system is wonderful. I feel it's both accessible to new players as well as having a lot of um, a lot of content and crunch for experienced players. My one criticism of Grim Dawn is I don't think it has very good bosses. I think it needs big, interesting, epic boss fights that feel different, and there aren't very many of them that do that. 
Uh, Last Epoch does have some great, cool, interesting bosses. Path of Exile does as well. Diablo, of course, does boss fights pretty well. It is blessing. And then the end game for this, when I was playing it before, I don't know what the current patch version is, and I don't know what 1.0 will be, um, <clears throat> did have sort of a repeatable, um, like a mapping system, like sort of a Path of Exile, Atlasy type of thing, but not really. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna this we're just going to kill you. things and go towards map markers. And we're going to go to this Brainiac over here. Hello, Trav. All right, let's make some plans. So, I'm going to dump all this. I'm going to put one point back into Arkness, which will give us our Glacier again, which is, I can you know, kind of important because that's what we've been relying on. Uh, we've got another spec point available here. We're to try Lesser Glacier, make it cheap, and then lose the biggest explosion. Now, I think preparation might be fun with Glacier. Or the survivability of something like Reactive Ward may be valuable. The monoliths aren't planning to make change in the future at least, so endgame won't be the same as it is now. Or would be the same as it is now. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I don't know what D4 endgame is like. I, I do have to go back and give D4 another chance, but I really... I really wasn't enjoying myself with it, but I didn't play it since, like, right at release. All right, we'll go here. I think ward stuff's gonna be nice for survivability. D4 end game laughing, okay. And that's what I thought. But D3 had a similar problem. I, I heard that D3 after the expansion and some extra okay? patches got quite a lot what? better. And us, what have that must we have? Are you, you stay safe, stay alive, and bring both us back. Rate for S4, they'll redo the animization. <clears throat> Preparation should be good for normal glacier, but not lesser one. Oh, because we're going to be spamming the lesser glacier more. You can spam it nonstop. It's going to be a much smaller area of effect, but it is going to cast like more consistently and faster. Yeah, I see what you mean. Preparation would be good if you're doing it slow and less often. So yeah, we're going to build some of this reactive ward stuff. So if this still benefits us stacking health on our gear, which is good, because health is good. Oh, hello. A boss, this is more of a unique trait. Yeah, he's spawning a clone. I'm not really setting up my filter right now because I don't really know what we're looking for. Okay, I guess we could set up a very permissive filter, but most likely it would still end up showing most items. So there you, go. you can see a secondary health bar that pops up there. That's the ward. So, ward works. there's a com comparable thing in another game. It's sort of like a spell shield, right? Like an extra an extra health bar on top of your normal health bar. Um, but it degrades over time and it degrades faster the more you've got. So in practice there's kind of there's kind of a maximum that you can earn because at a certain point it starts decaying so fast that it's like it doesn't exist at all anymore. But you can change, and you can see a description over here. Um, you can you can affect uh, the decay rate of your ward with items and passive skill tree and stuff like that. So you can have characters that are really heavily based around it. All right, we got ourselves a second specialization now. So there's Flame Ward, which we talked about, which is quite good. It does give you an instant ward thing. It's good for survivability. Um, that's a definite possibility. Hey, it's like an energy shield in Path of Exile, but degrades over time. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I need to worry about Fireball or Lightning Blast right now. The The Glacier's kind of our all-in-one solution here. Single target, multi-target. I'll probably pick up the Flame Ward. You can do Retaliation, change it to Lightning. Increase Saturation and Mana Efficiency. Oh yeah, Ward over time while it's active. So yeah, we cast this, so it gives you 400 Ward, then for three seconds hit deal less damage and cause retaliatory burst of flames. Um, Give Knockback. Percent of missing health granted as ward. Uh, this would auto cast flame ward as stun when I'm stunned, assuming it's not already on cooldown um, and we have the mana for it. It's a nice little like 
brainless thought. Destroy an additional charge. Man efficiency, duration. While we do this, increase our fire damage, which we're not really doing. Reduced elemental damage. Can be cast on allies. I think I might go down Dilation and then in Energize here. Because if I don't have more ward retention, I don't know if like the more bulk ward granted is going to help us short term. And again, we can just change this later. So I'll go into there. And here, I think we might go into Cold Snap, which is going to flip around and add more mana cost again. But it is going to deal a lot of extra damage. So we're going to do that. Dude. Oh yeah, that definitely did increase the mana cost substantially again. So now it's almost feeling like we're not playing with uh, with the lesser glacier anymore. I mean, it's still cheaper than it was. I think for clearing trash like this, I think it's overkill. I think it's doing more too much damage. I think it was already one-shotting them on that on the second tick. So I actually think I'm gonna undo that. Yeah. I mean I can regen with the right click and things, but I don't think that's where I'm vibing. So I'm coming over here, I'm gonna respect. I'm just gonna remove one point. Like that. And we have to re-earn the XP, but that's fine. And then I won't put it there. I'll do something else with it. I suspect we'll probably put points in there later, but I don't think we need it for now. Although, ironically, it would be quite useful for these, for these uniques, I'm sure. Because the damage was going up higher than the mana cost. But I like that it's spammable right now. That feels good. When we get some mana regen later, then it'll probably feel better again. Oh, yeah, and the other thing, too. Hold on. My flame ward. I want to do that. I mean, maybe I'll leave the fireball and stuff in there as well. Might replace the mana strike. Maybe I'll put the fireball in there as the thing. Yeah, what? Oh, there's a quest down. The idea is my W is now my emergency button. All right, hit W. I got my flame ward. I've got tons of ward around me. I'm quite tough and tanky. You can see the ward decrease quite quickly, though. It's got a cooldown. It's not, I mean, it's not, like, free, but it's not the most expensive thing in the universe, especially when you consider the cooldown. But I think mostly I'm going to try to save it as an emergency button. Did I run past another question mark? Or no, you just probably just really want. <laughs> All right, so we have picked up a lot of shit, which I'd really be looking at. Ooh, see, increased lightning damage, physical damage, a decent spell damage as well. I think some of the stabs give a lot, like don't have the melee boost and have a lot more spell damage if we look for it. Let's transfer these crafting items. Um, well, we may as well equip that because our current belt is non-existent. Um, a lot more block chance and elemental resist. It does not give me as much. We'd lose the spell damage in mana. Right, because it's a proper shield as opposed to the offhand catalyst kind of thing. I mean, resistances and block are pretty good to survive. You know what? Maybe we'll just do that for now. Hey, increase cold damage. And cast speed? Sure. Okay, a relic slot. There we go. Spell damage. Critical strike chance. Cold damage. Perfect. Plus one to Lightning Blast, so this actually gives you an extra skill point in the Lightning Blast skill if you want to use it. I don't have it, but this is still going to be an upgrade. That. I mean, I could still use it, but I'm not going to. Uh, Blighted Arcane Quill of Hope. It's got Quill in the name. It gives you Ward on Kill. Damage over time, which we're not currently doing. Crit Chance is still fine. I mean, both items give us Crit Chance. And it's got Resist. I don't know. I think I'll keep the Assassin's Runic Scroll for now. All right. Play the last Epoch now or wait for the update. Um, again, we think that the characters will carry over 
from this into the update. So you could start now. I mean, in theory, the experience is going to be better at 1.0. Now, I have to say, um, when they dropped 0.9, which I was very excited about, it was kind of a glitchy drop at the time, uh, which makes me worried that maybe when 1.0 drops, maybe it'll also be glitchy, or, you know, maybe they've, you know, learned their QA process a little bit more, and 1.0 will be great out of um, the bat. I'm just going to say, if you're excited to play it, I think it's probably fine to play right now. Should probably see about adding more movement. Oh, shit. Did you die, please? So if they don't get hit by that second, uh... I don't know, you guys are just legit. Uh, yeah, I know it has controller support. I don't know what it's like to play it on. But I think it's full, like, Steam Deck certified and everything, so... Presumably fairly playable. We expect, uh, when can we expect more soft rank? I don't know about when. I'm sure there will be some more. I'm kind of tempted by the new impossible mode because it sounds exciting. Of many pockets. I love that there's an inventory sword item here. Hello, teleport. So again, I have to say, for like fast clearing and stuff like that, the Teleport that auto casts a bunch of these elemental novas. If we just spe specialize in teleport and elemental nova, we would feel kind of like badasses. I think we need a few more points. Like we'd have to be higher level so that we could reach higher levels with our um, our skills to make a combo viable. But it might be fun to try. It wouldn't be very good at killing bosses, so we'd be relegated to using like you know, fireball. Or something. What we, we just what we would do is we would uh, specialize in another skill. Oh, we have access to disintegration now. Um, excellent album by the Cure. Really good. I mean, One point you can keep characters, but they will be the equivalent of standard eternal. Okay, so they won't be uh, they they won't be the league characters, but yeah, so you still do get your character. I mean, we respect. Huh. Yeah, I I I know, Blissey, exactly. That was my issue as well when I played Disintegrate in here. Uh, let's play it with it for a little while. Which I'm realizing, I think we may have done on a stream, or no, maybe it was one of my multiplayer things. Um, so yeah, you got this beam. Um, it deals fire and lightning while you're channeling it. Um, so you can increase shock. Escalation's interesting, because what this does is it makes it, the longer you channel it, the more damage it does. Uh, it does encourage even more standing still, which can be a little frustrating. Uh, this converts it into a pure electric ability, which makes it maybe easier to itemize. Uh, laser focus is interesting. No longer costs mana and instead grants mana every second while damaging enemies. However, it deals less damage and applies to elements less frequently. So, kind of reverses certain, some mechanics, which is odd. Uh, this is interesting. So this can make you quite tanky because what you can do is while you're channeling this, you take less damage. And then you deal more damage and then you have two beams. Because why have one beam when you can have two? And then all of a sudden it also gives you mana and kill. Uh, if we go down here, it also gives us ward while it goes. Here no longer pierces, so it won't pass through enemies. Um, it does more damage per kill. I don't know if I like the vibe of that. This has a delay before casting, but deals more damage. I don't know if, how well this feels, but it's interesting. Um, backfire. Flame energy builds up on enemies within the beam, causing an explosion that deals fire damage around them after five seconds of taking damage. I mean, that, that sounds a little slow. This makes it purely fire. I say I think the escalation is pretty good. I think you can actually unlock a third tier. Oh yeah, right here, third tier. I mean that, that's like quite a long amount of channeling, but it does deal stupid amounts of damage if you get to there. And then you can speed up how quick they get to tiers over here. Um, it's probably worth going to escalation. Shock versus Ignite. Shock versus 
strong. Let's go here. We'll put three points in the feedback, and then we'll go up to escalation. So we'll use this for a bit. I mean, it's satisfying, right? And this is only rank one, so, you know, arguably it's going to get better as we go with things. I think our glacier might... It certainly our glacier vibe was was giving us more of a mobility feel, right? Maybe I shouldn't have respect it. Maybe I should have just used it, like, unspecialized for a little while. I definitely feel like our glacier was killing faster. Now, it's possible that Disintegrate scales better. I, even with no specialization, doesn't the Glacier still feel better? Maybe, maybe Disintegrate is the sort of thing where it's not worth doing until you get a lot of points in it. You know, and then you can, you can consider maybe getting the man on kill or some damn thing. I think for now, we'll, uh, we'll stick with Glacier. And then we'll specialize back into it. I have to say, I'm wondering about, maybe we don't go Lesser Glacier. That third tick doing so much damage, the fire and forget nature of it was kind of nice. I wonder how this feels, the fading echoes. We'll instantly do the big chunk of damage and then sort of peter off. Mm, this, I don't, I mean, the freeze rate, I like the mana efficiency. Mm. Damage and man efficiency. Maybe I just pump a bunch in the freezing or breaking point. I might not go lesser glacier. Is, uh, sealed and temporarily displaced. Oh. Oh, it freed this mage! Whoa, jeez, that's some damage. Okay, were you charging your laser that whole time? I thought you were frozen, but you might have just been charging your laser. Um, I'm not sure I can take you. And I'm realizing the other thing, too, is the biggest damage. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, we got, we got mechanics going on. He might just run away from this guy. I don't know if he'll chase, but Jeebus! Follow me over here for a sec, buddy. I am not a man of many pockets. Okay, and if you could freeze for a sec and let me run away, that would be lovely. No, no, stop chasing me. Stop chasing me. Stop chasing me. Oh, there's a zone crossing here. Yeah, I'm I'm just not going to deal with that mage right now. A little like a rogue exile from uh, Poe, right? A little bit of the vibe. Yeah, I don't remember seeing those before. That's new to me. This feels like a boss fight area. You're here for the epoch. Reaching me was impressive, but it's mine. Core member wing. All right, discount Sean Bean. Oh, all right. Burn! No, you haven't taken any damage. I mean, yes, you have, but. Not really. Jeeves. Okay, I mean, I saw the area. I guess I could dodge it. See, this is the sort of fight that Grim Dawn doesn't have. I, um, I will espouse that my, my favorite ARPG these days continues to be Grim Dawn. And it's not even close. But I really wish it had fights like this. Like, cool set-piece boss fights. It doesn't have very many. They're just like... Normal dudes with more hit points is what it feels like. He 
fine job here I really yeah I think this glacier is like the level for us I don't think you know well, again I don't know I know nothing about the rune master so I have no idea what rune master kit and the thing is sometimes some of the, the you, you specialize right and when you specialize your your, your 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 mastery has different spells sometimes you don't even end up using them you're just you're just specializing for the, the passive tree and you might still be using uh, mostly your, your baseline stuff there's nothing wrong with that. Usually you'll end up using some of it. No. Alright, hey, we did it. I am not a man of many Yeah, points. okay. We're gonna have to uh do a little uh fiddling here. Increased elemental damage and vitality. We lose some fire resist, but I think that's okay. Uh, oh, that's better. More elemental damage, more like some resistances and a bunch of flat health. Good. Okay. Grab that and then grab some random shit over here. Okay. I have a W slot. Oh, that's my uh, flame shield, which Get I don't use enough. Oh, with terror. My knees. Such life. Rune Master's very strong, likely a nerf block for 1.0. All right. I will be, thanks to you. There. The, the power is more just one, two of them. The third, all right. Lena sent no. The alternative would be to leave one with Lena, yes. Though, right now, with Raya at our heels, one the cannot work? use a single shot to manipulate time as they wish. But Etera tasked us to protect. Now, I find a new course of action, which, speaking of. So, Let's head back to in, previous to this, you ended up picking once. up the shards just randomly off the ground and like time traveling almost instantly. We are, we're, we're sticking around in this era for a lot longer than before. Why is Grimmauld now your favorite era PG? Um, the, I uh, just, oh my God. Okay, it's a great question. And I should be able to, I always say, if you can't explain something in a sentence, you don't fully understand it. So that might be the case. But the problem is, when you're talking about ARPGs, there's a lot of different aspects that come into play. Um, one thing that feels like maybe a downside for Grim Dawn is the fact that the maps are not randomly generated. They are they are fixed. On the plus side, it means they are handmade. Uh, the same thing happens as actually in um, in Last Epoch here. These are not randomly generated maps, whereas um, Diablo, uh, the maps are randomly generated. I mean, the overworld of Diablo 4 is static, but the dungeons are randomized. Um, and I think like stuff like D2 used to be a lot more randomized. Um, uh, Path of Exile is, you know, procedurally generated randomized maps to shake it up. But the plus side of not doing that is you can craft maps and you can put a lot of interesting things in. There's a lot of lore to discover. Uh, Grim Dawn, you have to seek out the lore, kind of find it. You find like log books and stuff to, to read, but the lore and the story is fantastic. I like experimenting around the map. I love the build diversity. Um, I don't find... I think Path of Exile, again, has great build diversity, but it sort of punishes experimentation and new players, and whereas Grim Dawn doesn't do that. Yeah, it's, it's like a bunch of different reasons. I don't know. It's hard. I think um, each ARPG changes things up a little bit, and there's not there's never one size fits all answer. Oh, Grim Dawn also has the most satisfying melee. The way that you, you sort of lock on for melee, it's the only ARPG I've ever enjoyed doing actual melee in. And anyone who's ever tried to do melee in something like a Path of Exile or whatever, knows like melee is garbage and feels bad feels good in in um in, in uh, grim dawn he's been quiet since he You're back. i feel bad that i'm skipping lore here but do you i want to play the game I I Lena. lore is for when i play I'm single sorry, player i'm sorry to you too this is what's best this is new game uh so last epoch has been early access for a while yeah the 1.0 is dropping in 11 days Res be with you I'm, I didn't realize I was being uh, teleported here. I was like, hey, where am I supposed to go next? Here's to be one of the shards of the Epoch that Balthus had. It looks like it has only been here as long as you have. Balthus and the other shards are nowhere in sight. Take the shard. Or new surrounding. So we're in a completely different time zone now. So we were playing here in the Divine Era, minus 12 BE. Now we're in the Ruined Era, 1290 AG. So this is a time traveling game. 
great vibe, cool story, the way that you kind of go back to the past and change things for the future and you keep going back and forth. Um, it's actually a really cool vibe. And so, and you're, you're kind of exploring the same geography multiple times. Except that it, it shifts. It's a really cool idea. A really, I really like it. And then, yeah, the end game, uh, the end game mechanic with the monoliths is you're kind of, you're, you're revisiting the areas and the events you've been before, but with alt histories. It's like, it's like the what if series, except in ARPG format. I prep, well, I didn't realize that the, um, the characters were gonna move to a legacy league. So if I want to play a character in 1.0 in the season, then I'd be starting from fresh. It still means I have the legacy league. Mostly it was about relearning the mechanics before uh, 1.0 drops. And also um, that uh, I haven't played in a while. So yeah, it's about practice. And I kind of just wanted to. I was in the mood for an ARPG today. Up. Group up while my mana recharges. Yeah, baby. Efficiency. Oh, I'm making a boss here. I haven't been checking the loot, but I don't think there's been anything too notable. Right click a little bit to regenerate some mana. Hopefully we're in range of the big explosion there. This one will definitely work. Oh, I gotta remember my W. Like this. Split. That's okay. I'm still doing lots of splash damage. Hey, level 10. Ah, uh, wait, hold on. At level 9 we got our teleport, didn't we? I think we've had access to a teleport for a bit. Oh yeah, I still haven't dumped all my shit in town. Um, I really need to do that. Yeah, we got a teleport. Minimum skill level. So now if I respec, um, these things would start at least level 2 as opposed to level 1, which is nice. Well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, how do I feel about the order here? I think I'm going to teleport on R. And the fireball here in case I want a single target, although the right click's probably going to work out. Maybe, before I go into Lesser Glacier, maybe I should be investing in Moderate Destruction to make the Middle Explosion do more damage, since we don't get the large one anymore. So I'm going to put at least a second point in the Breaking Point, which is still more damage and more mana efficiency, and then that unlocks this ability over here. It also might be really handy to pick up a Mordito's Bane or two for the boss fights. I am not. I am not a man of many pockets. Right. Now, I really should be dumping more. Th well, okay. Do we start to tune our loot filter? Now, people have made loot filters that you can download. Like, I've got these, for example, over here. Okay, I've got one for uh, for a maid for version 9. Maybe I should just run this one over here. I don't always agree with their decisions. I do tend to like to craft it. But for the sake of simplicity and speed right now, let me just load up um, this person's... Uh, loot filter that they made. I feel like there's more steps in here that I usually use and still doesn't necessarily weed out everything that I like, but that's going to be fine. That's interesting that it didn't... Um, the fire damage, but probably not enough of it. Oh, I might have... I may have... Uh, these are hinds. Probably with level modifiers. Yeah. Hmm. I don't like that none of these are showing up. I mean, I want a stricter loot filter, but something feels too strict. I'm just gonna drop all this stuff to the ground. What is going on with your filter here, buddy? I mean, no reef color, these should show things.
Hmm. I believe this is uh this is one I did. My mage leveling build. This looks about right. This is definitely one of mine. You can see I'm forcing all the unique set and exalted items to show no matter what. Um I think these helmets I'm hiding. Right, these are class specific helmets that are not mage ones, so I'm hiding any of those because I don't want to see those. Uh, and then I'm colorifying things with affixes that theoretically I like. And I think this was pretty permissive. I think I was enabling, yeah, anything that add, that matches. So this filtering system is insane. So this is going to show me, these are affixes I consider to be good. Intelligence and vitality seems, seems good for our mage. Any of these spell modifier ones, spell damage, casting speed, spell chance stuff, that seems good. Uh, damage type, okay, so I had filtered it there. What I might want to do for now is turn on all the damage types. I might want to go and then turn some more off again. Um, like, I don't know what element I'm going to use, so I might want to leave all the elements on. I don't think we're going to do necrotic. All right, so we'll go with those. Uh, under general, that's fine. I mean, who knows? We might end up green critical strike uh, damage over time, but we can tweak that later. All the health modifiers, a bunch of things. Yeah, so this is a fairly permissive uh, set of things. Um, you know what? I'll turn on all the mage affixes. That's going to be fine. Um, so this is the blue one. So I think what I need to do is just delete those, duplicate this again. And what we can do is... So this is the total number of affixes on the item. If they've got more than a certain number, that matches. Oops, that color too here. All right, so then we do... Add, and then this one here, and say if it's got more than like nine. I think the lower level one I probably want to change a little. Um, and then bright green. Actually, I think I kind of want to invert these colors, so that's fine. And I think what I might do is take this number down a little bit. So now, if it's got th three levels worth in some combination of whatever uh, that's mage compatible, we're going to do that. So now all of a sudden we can see some of these items again. And they're in the blue category, which makes sense because they're only going to take this. Let me change the red to a like a five and the green to the seven. I can change these over time or you can just, you know, set up a bunch of rules ahead of time. So none of them are good enough to be considered red, but these blue ones have at least three tiers worth. So it might be a single affix with level three or more likely at this point, it's probably three affix of level one or a two and a one or something like that. So much more specific sort of thing. So here it's probably showing up because, oh, probably because of fire damage, which is an elemental thing. It's got a resistance. It's got a health modifier. So that's probably why it's showing up over there. So we can be a little bit more, a little more picky in our loot. I'm still not sure we're going to use any of these. And then the other thing you can do with the crafting system is you can break these apart. Let's say you don't want to use these, but you're like, okay, so this has got a tier two of increased lightning damage and a tier two of chance to ignite. I'm not going to run this right now, but maybe these are valuable to me. So what we can do is I can throw it in here and we can shatter this. So if I shatter this, what it's gonna do, it's gonna break these affixes apart and give me a random number of these as um, the um, the runes or glyphs or whatever they're called that you use for crafting. So if I shatter this, there you go. I got one lightning damage shard and two chance to ignite on hit. That's pretty good. I got three out of the four affixes added to my inventory over here. Now, generally that's worth doing on things with lots of affixes or some of the rarer affixes that might be more important to farm. Oh, he's out of shatter, yeah. It was very easy to run through too many shatters. So uh, in your loot filter, what you might have is a level, uh, um, some sort of thing in here that's not for your character that you're working on, but rather is a just a catch for things that have like just lots of levels in some valuable affixes that are just there to shatter. Like you have a special color for things you want to shatter. Terror's name. Don't play dumb, only ranged elders allowed here. Everyone knows that. Oh, okay, so this is this feels very much like what used to happen when you first got the shard. Layout of the room is different. What are you talking about? I'm not a cultist. Yeah, send me there. Okay, good. So we've unlocked this next level, although if I want to get arcane currents for... This is when you deal damage to the lightning skill. This is when you deal damage to the fire skill, which currently we're not doing. All the distance rate is lightning and fire. But I guess we're not going to do that. Might still be worth grabbing a, um, even just one point of prep. 
Or what we do is we just save up and work towards the next tier, grabbing whatever. You know, if I just keep maxing out Arcanist, I don't think that's a mistake. Teleport. Now we got a huge mobility boost. Felt this is the absolute. Yep. Now, I don't know if it does um, things like Path of Exile and now Grim Dawn, where it'll put things on your new map if, like, a good piece of gear drops. Yeah, you might be shattering too much. You pick up a lot of runes just sort of as you go. I don't usually... I mean, certainly while leveling, I don't tend to shatter anything anymore. Because the stuff you're shattering is probably not worthwhile. Terra, watch over you. Gods. So much lore. Love a button or way to use loot filters and stash render inventory. That is interesting. You can actually do that in uh, Path of Exile. Yes. There's a little search box, and you can put in, um, like, Kind of like regex kind of stuff. So you can you can put in a certain thing to like that is effectively show me items with a green green blue link. It's useful for speedrunners. Like a plan, like I need a specific link to enable a certain thing or. Uh, also, I want to search for, like, Mana, pull back. All right. So, yeah, we're definitely not seeing anywhere near as many items anymore. And it doesn't take long to set up the loot filters, and the loot filters are so good, but I was like... I don't know if it's good for the screen. And the issue right now is I still don't know what I want. So just enabling, yeah. Anything that feels fairly magic y, we're gonna, still going to get lots of stuff that's not actually relevant. But it'll have a chance of improving things. I mean, it's hard to go wrong with things that just generally become more relevant, right? Health, resistances. It's got, like, spell damage on it. Bonus, but. This game single player. Do you mean barter? Um, is this this is online. I mean, you can play offline. You can play purely offline. Uh, I'm playing in online mode. I think I have the uh, I have the chat turned off. That's why would I like to interact? With them? I gotta say that's one of the things that really impressed me with playing Warframe is I actually enjoy grouping, which I never do. I'm like so antisocial. Yeah, before I go into Lesser Glacier, I'm wondering about maxing out Moderate Destruction. Go up here and grab that shrine. There it is. Damn refraction. You know what? Premier says the Yeah. Right. It's more about, like, anxiety with other players, or I don't know. Or the, the chatter, the random chatter in, like, this game. Distracting. Here, the chatter in our Twitch chat is great because it's all relevant to exactly what yes. we're doing, right? Gods be with you. Try not they to hurt yourself. People, this is just side quest shit. Twitch chat relevant. Super relevant. Sometimes we talk about food. It's my favorite thing. Let's go and grab that first, because I think going east is yes. Yeah, Continue the main quest. D4 doesn't have the uh, overlay map, right? They're like, they're like, well, we want players to focus on the map that they're on rather than just basically playing by staring at the minimap. I think this is a relevant thing to consider, but... 
not very convenient. Also, isn't D4 like playing D4 like zoomed in like this? Isn't this your field division in Diablo 4? Okay, maybe a slight exaggeration, but even this is a little zoomed in for me compared to uh, Grimdawn. Let's see if that. Now we got our loot filter set up. The first time we see, so we're no longer seeing blue versus yellow, which is the default thing to show them. two apexes versus three and four. But now, like the first, the first time we see something highlighted red, we're like, oh, that's something that's gonna be pretty sick. Was very zoomed in, maybe. Although it does, again, it has the map. I mean, Poe's all about the zooming. Has developed like the speed meta. Don't get me wrong. Like, again, I've been playing Warframe. Turns out going fast in games is pretty fun. But the sort of speed meta in Poe has. Mm, I don't know if it's end of the game in a good place. I'm really not using Flame Ward very much, but when we need it, it is going to be really good. Well, am I ever going to have the mana for it? Is the problem. I keep spending all my mana on the freaking uh, glacier. Eh, whatever. Uh. Have mods. Um, because it's, you know, a big part of it is going to be, of course, like, playing online. You know, that. I suspect that mods isn't going to be as much of a focus in this game. I mean, if you play in purely offline mode, then I guess that would be fun. I mean, maybe, conceivably, there could be support for it. That is pretty unlikely, I suspect. I think I missed a right now. Okay, I think this zone is basically the same. So I guess it was just that act one that had gotten a redo. Yeah, swap out flame warp something single target. It's not a bad cry. Like we could um, make I know that the um, the lightning blast had a, a no single target damage. I think. I think fireball might as well. And that might be good. Just for the boss fights. What brings you here? Matera's grace be with you. Shards are what you use for crafting. Did I get a nice claw skill? Oh, he did. Melee? No, projectiles. Arc to the target location and create a burst of frost. Added spell damage applies to a burst 100% effectiveness, freeze rate of 40. Is this a sh I mean, it's, no, it's got the area tag in it. I wonder if there's a, um, like a mutator for it that causes a like, single target thing. Oh. Or we just play with Ice Claw for a while as our... Let's, um... You know, I'm, I'm not using Teleport much right now. Let's throw Frost Claw in there. Ooh! That looks pretty cool! No pun intended. Really. So, I mean, we don't have any specialization in it right now. How come my mana was going? Oh, I was messing over the wrong thing. Mana cost is nine. It's not. I mean, it's probably a twelve. It's actually got a three point discount on my one. I mean, it's not three. It feels good though. Cast magic. This looks dark. Roll the dice. See if I'm getting drunk. Fools. I think the thing that's got for this is, and it's tricky because, okay, here's the thing. If anyone's wanted to play an action RPG before, they probably have. But what this could excel at, this could really be quite good at being an RPG for people who have been intimidated or confused by this. Right? I've tried Path of Exile, and it's too complicated. Whatever. 
Um, and this one here, I feel, works quite well as a new one. I know I um, played with this with Rhino, who had not played a lot of air RPGs before. And we actually had a great time with this, except for the fact that when we were playing, the multiplayer was horribly glitchy and problematic. Freezing stuff. Um, and so then the question just becomes, does it have the depth and complexity to keep people in the game? Hardcore players. I mean, if you the hardcore of hardcore are always going to pick that thing out because sure, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm tempted. I'm intrigued. I'm, you know, what what are gonna they gonna do with the end game? What the item edition gonna be like? Oh, is it too loud? Is the game too loud? Sorry. We can leave the. Bring down a little bit, max out the voice. Something like that. <clears throat> I can boost my uh, microphone volume a little bit too. Especially since I'm trying not to speak too loudly. Mm. I'm a little bit worried about my throat still. I see. I should probably make myself a cup of tea. What? All right, so yeah, you want me to find the ledger, and then this guy wants me to bring him the ledger instead. Good luck out there. We all need it now. You, I, you, eld, I have received every plea. The gods have long left this world. And we got our first idol. So we got a new area on our character sheet over here for idols. Um, we only have this little, little tetramino spot available to it. And it gave us this chance to ignite on hit and fire resistance. Uh, and I've got a ton of this in my inventory, and it might be time to take a look at some stuff I have stashed previously just to accelerate some gameplay. You always side with uh, Artem? I can't remember which one is Artem. You feeling lucky? This one over here. So it gives you like the, the crit item, right? Now, is this this one where it's confusing where... Okay, maybe not now, but I think later this person will give us a quest at the same time, so it's a little confusing because Do they don't show up as a mini-map that's yes. having it. Um... Shift right click to sell. <laughs> oh, we don't do damage over time. And we'd lose some spell damage from the uh, the base runic scroll. Okay, the runic scroll between the spell damage and the cold damage does do a lot. Regen, health, and resistance is good. I don't know how much void damage we're taking at this stage in the game. You know what, I think I'll just sell it. I think it's fine. We'll keep with what we've got now, but we will be looking for a swap. I do like the double resistances. All right, we'll wait until there's a, a clearer, stronger upgrade. You're pretty samey. I guess there was more armor, but... Follow your feet. So, do I have any uniques I could be wearing now that might be handy? Uh, not these the poison stuff. No, these X's I'm not high enough level for yet. I mean, if we want to go fire damage. I think we should wear Snowblind for now. Lots of armor, cold resist, and then just chance to chill and blind with cold skills, which we're clearly using a bunch of. Oh yeah, uh, the Tome of the Elements. Elemental damage leeches life, increased chance to chill, shock, ignite. Yep. Okay. Get in the Necronomicon. What are we gonna do? Oh yeah, the this, which is pretty good, but we're not gonna use it. Physical skills. Need this to be more organized, but that's okay. Um, boots, 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 boots. I mean, the lessons of the Metropolis doesn't give anything specific to our build, but actually it's probably fine and useful right now. I got tons of copies of those. I should probably just sell off some of the excess. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's throw that on. That's fine. We'll consider maybe doing that. Uh, we can 
Get the Keeper's Gloves. Just a ton of resist. And summon some bees. Not the bees. Uh, an Avarice. Elemental damage leeches health. Yep. Great. Oh, I've got tons of those fire starters torches. The spoon. No. That's for minions. Oops. Mostly minion. That looks like a cool robe. Prism warps. Uh, less elemental damage taken. Increased elemental damage. Increased critical strike chance. Elemental damage leeched his health on crit. All right. What was this one? The Falcon. Yeah, okay. All right. Yes. Let me just uh, sell this. <laughs> What's interesting about the Firestarter's Torch is if we went back to Disintegration, Disintegration's a fire spell. It was Fireball, so it's this, so it's that. Oh, my wand that I'm wearing is the damage over time. I hadn't realized that. I think I was just seeing increased damage. Damage over time is not really something we do much. I like how this has got the uh, movement speed. A torch could definitely carry us. We'd want to swap some things. Use Fireball or use Elemental Nova. We could take Frost Claw and convert it to fire, apparently. I know, I like, I'm loving the glacier, as is. Uh, yeah, Disintegration is fire lightning by default. Although then you can uh, you can swap it to be exclusively lightning or exclusively fire. But yeah, it does a combination of fire and lightning to start off with. Follow your feet. I don't know if I'll end up, I don't know. I will, we'll go for now. I'm enjoying the glacier. Why why load time? And then second load time. What What is happening with the servers when I try to do a zone transition? And yeah, it's brutal if you have multiple players. I'm convinced that what happens is the server is generating the map and then transferring it to the player. Zuh. Or some, some weird shit like that. Or the, the host of the session is generating the map, sending it to the server. And then if you got multiple players, then the server is sending it to each individual player. Like, I feel like there's something going on. That is just bonkers. So it'll be interesting to see how the map loading feels when the uh, in 1.0. Oh. Does it feel like we're doing less damage all of a sudden? Which may be possible, but we do have like tons of spell leech and shit now. I'm really not using the flame shield. I should probably spec out of it. I mean, I'm gonna use it now because I'm A, thinking about it, and B, I just took some damage. But if we've got the elemental leech, then maybe it is about the single target. Maybe we should see what happens when we uh, convert Frost Claw. It already felt good. What was this? We haven't actually even looked at the um, the specialization tree for Frost Claw here. Cheaper chance to gain mana on shot. Slow chill. This converts everything to fire. Projectile speed, mana efficiency, spark artillery. Oh, this changing it to lightning. Okay. Cast speed. And it cleanses ailments off ourselves. Well, that's interesting. If you have an active ice barrage. Well, we're not doing that right now. A chance to cast ice barrage. Oh, okay. Extra projectiles makes it more expensive. Hit areas, enemies in the wider area. No, we actually want it focused. Oh, Volley of Class. Here we go. No longer creates a burst. All projectiles hit the same target. It becomes more expensive, but this actually sounds like a fun single target option. So we'd probably want to go put two points in Gift of Winter to bring us to Fen of the Frozen and put one tick in there. One point in Bright Flaw Frost. One in here, and then one over there. So we need quite a few levels for it to become a single target killer. For Fireball... There's something that makes it... 
good against a single target. I do like the homing fireballs, but that's not what we're looking for. I mean, to me, fireball is inherently multi-target. Yeah, see, this gives it pierce, which is definitely more targets. Extra projectiles. I think, oh, the embers turns your uh, fireball into a shotgun or um, um, a machine gun, which is quite fun. So you get extra projectiles. They all fire in the same and they can hit the same target. So this is how you can do single, more single target damage. Just pew, 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 in a line. Flamethrower is a channeled ability. So if we did that, it would be three points in here, point in here, so that's four. So five points in total turns Fireball into a pretty good single target thing. And we've, we're have we at the point where we can have four. We're pretty close to a fifth level. Maybe I drop the specialization in Flame Shield, throw Fireball in there instead. Work our way up to Embers. Fireball is even going to be a little good now because we put some more things. It feels so unsatisfying. It is free, which is great. We do regen mana while we're casting it because it's not, we're not channeling anything. So it's not a bad filler. Maybe I should just put the uh, fireball in the uh, right click. All right, right now I still have my uh, my sword swing, which does generate mana, but we can just put fireball in there and use that as a filler while we're waiting for it for recharge. Interesting, intrigued to see an ARPG buck that. Oh, buck what? You know, Poe promised a lot of build variation in practice. Only top builds in the meta were actually viable for any. I don't know. I think there's a lot of variation in Poe. Like build choice, bigger factor in gear. Mostly everyone models on the loot Tiniana, which is odd. So many aren't running NPX or battle passes. You know, we really could go and focus on some fire shit if we're using that weapon. Glacier can't be made into like a fire glacier, right? No. I can just put points in the scholar for now. Which does give us volcanic orb. Is this our replacement for glacier? Okay, so now we're a Diablo 2 sorceress, right? With no skill points thrown into that, it's still, I mean, the Glacier is still doing pretty freaking good for us. But I can see some potential with that. It's expensive as shit. I'm gonna talk to you here, I'm curious. Oh, you can change it to ice as well? <laughs> Make it exactly the same? That's funny. Okay, if we go and we do equip this. So we lose our minus three mana cost thing, which is a shame. So now fireball... Oh, that's right! We lose the innate minus three mana cost, but it's got the minus four spell mana cost thing. So we, our fireball is still free. I mean, Glacier still got... Glacier still has more damage per second for a cheaper mana cost, although we have skilled into it. Hmm. The turns now oh, that was just for this lore, okay. The tunnels and keeper ruins are still navigation and... With their help. I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. Let's drop Glacier completely. We're going to throw Volcanic Orb in there. Um, I'm not going we to... Could, we could really make it Frozen Orb, but let's keep it fire-based. Shrapnel travels farther, faster, causing it to also travel further. Created more frequently. 
This seems like the sort of thing we want if we want to use this as a AOE clear. More projectiles. So I'm thinking the orb itself must do damage as well. Based on these descriptions, like orb damage. Volcanic orb core and shrapnel deal more damage. Volcanic orb has a duration of two seconds. Taking an explosive ground node leaves explosive grounds more often. Man efficiency. This reduces shrapnel frequency, but increases its damage. Increase the orb damage. Shrapnel pierces. That sounds quite good for clearing groups. Because our little projectiles will just keep going through multiple things. Don't like volcanic orb damage is too random. I mean, I can see that. Creates fire glyph in your feet, which explodes. You get less shrapnel, but does pass through things. Whatever, let's uh let's go volcanic emission for now. See how this feels. Oh, the DPS is probably a little weird to describe on this too. And yeah, we lost a bunch from the glacier. Um because it might just be counting, like it's not necessarily counting all these little shrapnels. It is pretty random. It'd be great if there was a seeking for it. God, it does feel bad compared to Glacier, doesn't it? I mean, I cleared that group. If you read this, I trust you all. You are my people. Fireball is going to town. It's doing a good job. Yeah, Fireball has a homing passive, but I don't know if we're going there. Well, we might, because we're going to use the Fireball for boss killing, like single target. Not bad. So the, the, the orb does have a cooldown, but it kind of lines up with its mana regen right now. What's your favorite RimWorld playthrough? I gotta say, there was really something special about Westworld. Sensuous Cat Cafe was fun. We've done so many, it's hard. Shin's Legacy. Panion's stupid elder, I you please stop him. We'll turn yeah. into him. Want to try your luck? Oh, gamble, yeah. Take the reward. So we got the gambler's fallacy here. 100% critical strike chance if you've not dealt the critical strike recently. 50% less critical strike chance if you have. And gain health on crit. So, Gambler's Fallacy guarantees crits at a regular interval. Not too fast, but yeah. It's a great early item. I probably have like 15 of them in the bank, but here, we'll throw it on. Oh, the company playthrough. God, yes. Done. I don't want to do that one again. The downside to the company playthrough, it is the one where we kind of messed around with combat extended for a while and... I didn't like it. It may have ruined the run. I really need to go and make tea. I think I need to take a short break. And go and make some tea. Or at least get the water boiling. Anyway, I'll be right back. I'll play a very short ad break here while I'm away, because it'll line up things better later. Oh, thank you, Essentia. You just started the water boiling for me. Thank you. Then I feel bad. You know, it's fine. I'll take the break anyway to stretch and go pee.
All right. Perfect. Yeah, I really needed some tea. I'm missing conversation. I'm sad, though. I gotta catch up. We got a little pet ice beetle from that shrine. We're gonna keep playing with this, um, this volcanic orb for a little while to give it a proper shake. But... It's... Yeah, between the fairly low speed and kind of inconsistent hits, it's not necessarily feeling like the most satisfying thing, but... Trick if you're entertaining, good. Now, what we're doing here, right, where we're experimenting and doing little respects and trying different things. This is one of my things where I'm saying, like, I kind of wish Path of Exile <laughs> had slightly more support for being able to sort of play an experiment and figure out what's working for you. Now, I have to say that the gem system sort of does make it infinitely experimentable because you can swap the gems and the sport gems in and out perfectly fine. But to a certain extent, you're kind of locked in on the passive tree, right? Um... Now, some of it, especially when you're early on in the tree, tend to be fairly single focused. Uh, one of the examples might be if you go for the witch. Well, if you're going a minion build, then you're not going to put anything in the spell damage one. So you're going to have to fairly early on choose whether you're going minion versus a spell casting kind of vibe. But otherwise, we take a look at Enshrouded. I don't know Enshrouded. Right, so I'm going to go here because we're working our this way. And for this... Right, I was going to go for more projectiles. Apparently it's also going to include putting a bunch of stun chance in here. That doesn't feel great. I'm going to have to put three points in the ash pelting to get here. Hmm. Hey, what? Rune of Winter is going to change Lightning Blast and Volcanic Orb to Cold Spells. Wait, what? I didn't realize there was a, like, a mutator in our passive tree. That's very interesting. Um, crits. I kind of like the idea of maybe doing a crit magic build. I'd have no idea um, how the, uh, the Rune Master is going to feel for that. But I kind of like the idea of maybe leaning into the crits. Because most of these skills will end up... Wow, the burn damage is pretty crazy. I think crits guarantee landing the affliction, so I think your spells have like a certain chance to apply like the burn or the shock or the, the chill or whatever. I think a crit always um, affects it, which is why one of our spells we were looking at, there was one of the nodes made it so that crits don't deal extra damage, which seems like, well, then what's the point? But I think the reason is because it still gives the afflictions. So the nice thing with crit is, first of all, it's a it's another way to scale your damage, right? Because there's only so many things you can take that increase the raw damage of things. Here's another example of a cool little like set piece fight that this game has that I wish Grim Dawn did have. I love Grim Dawn. If you haven't played it, you should. It often comes on sale for super mega cheap, um, and the expansions are solid. But Grim Dawn doesn't have these sort of set piece fights, as far as I. Wait, in this game, crits have no chance to increase uh, affliction? It's all based on percentage? I'm sorry, I must be getting confused with a different game. There's definitely an RP ARPG where crits land the um, land the afflictions, and I must just be getting conf confused with that. So my apologies for incorrect information there. So we just traveled through time because the bridge was broken there and there's no way to get to the other side. So we just casually time traveled. We did a timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly thing. Just so we could go to a different era that happens to have an alternate path. Oh, am I thinking of Path of Exile? Ah, ha, ha. Um, I think we have a broken texture here. Sure, that's fine. So 
So we'll activate this waypoint. We could keep going here, but the big thing is we're just going to flip back over here. And now we're on the other side of that missing bridge. There you go. Just casual abuse of time travel powers. Anyway, I was just thinking about afflictions because I could see some people burning there. Holy dodge chance on this guy. I mean, I'd be assuming that I was just, you know, misclicking, except that I could actually see the words dodge come up. Chest or anything down here? No? Yes, I do love that about this game. So you can go over 100% chance to um, give an affliction, which will just have chance of doing multiple stacks so like if you're yeah if you're 250 percent then every hit does two stacks and a 50 percent chance to get another i love that mechanic i did a um i think one of my pet builds was based around bleed and i'm probably just getting confused that some of the skills probably have a a thing that says it applies the affliction on a crit but it must be like an explicit thing i gotta say okay i wasn't loving the volcanic ore but Honestly, in this fight here, and I have gotten used to it, you know, you just cast it in a different way. In this fight here, the glacier would have been a little bit annoying because the multi-directional thing here, but in this wide open area where everyone's coming from, you know, 360 degrees around, the volcanic orb is doing some good work. And the fact that the orb itself deals damage, and now I'm, I'm thinking, I can see the value of, like, Focusing on the orb itself rather than the shrapnels. Because um, if it did more damage or moved quicker, right, you could just throw the orb down in the middle of a group and not actually care about what the shrapnel is doing. Must have some pretty good fire resist because I'm just tanking that shit. Yeah, 49%. It's not too shabby. The visual effect of random fire streaks going across the screen. Oh, is there a visual bug on this? That's the thing. I felt like um there was, I really feel there was a quality control issue on version nine, like point nine, that then kind of didn't get resolved in nine one. 2, which has me I, I have to be cautious about 1.0. I'm hoping it's a high, you know, QA'd release for their 1.0 version, because certainly they're getting a lot of press and attention at that time, and they're not going to be able to hide behind early access. Like, to me, early access is, okay, we don't have all the features, we don't have all the contents, but if you're hoping that people play the game, it should at least not be buggy. Especially not after, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of patches, a couple of iterations of your early access release. So there's a physical forge here, but you don't have to use it because you can just hit F. Oh, I have another um, skill mastery, don't I? of a passive. Okay, I'm going to do this again. Oh. Or did I just unlock a new skill? I just unlocked a new skill. Static. Static charges up, you move or you get hit. Activate static to discharge what you have built up. Striking up to five nearby enemies with lightning. Sounds quite fun. Oh, and fireball. Now we can put it in fire spray. This will make my fireball more expensive and therefore not free anymore. I think it's going to cost me four. Yeah, that's too bad because it was quite nice as a filler. Now it's going to be less of a filler when I run out of mana. But and with the extra projectiles, because I think it is going in a cone. Yeah, it's not not great for the role that I'm working towards, which is the, the boss thing. Maybe I should have just waited, not put the point in yet. Just wait until I had two, because the next level is where we turn it into a shotgun or a, a machine gun instead. And does three in a row. Now I can just use 
Like, now I don't need to use anything else other than Fireball. I don't need to use my Volcanic Orb right now. Oops, that's wrong button. Yeah, I have Fireball twice on the bar. I have some other skills I'm not using on the bar. I'm just using two skills right now. I should probably put Flame Ward back on, even without specializing, and actually teleport. I should definitely have teleport on the bar. Put Flame Ward there as well, but we should have access to Flame Ward. Or, at the teleport. For whenever we get stuck. Get some Stroop Waffles and Speculot. Make sure Quill doesn't talk too much. Or bring about world peace. That might be easier. That is a fantastic do uh, Essentia themed uh, donation. Thank you very much for that. Oh. Fill this and then. Right. Let's see. I don't like that we're having to put three points in the ash pelting. But I do like the idea of more projectiles. Maybe I should have gone this way. Had more orb damage, more shrapnel damage, less shrapnel, but then you can have to do the pierce. Eh, let's just keep committing over here and see how it feels when we get Yeah, I think I really should have waited and just put two points in the fireball. The fact that it costs mana now. now I don't know if it's shotguns. I, I don't know if the multiple projectiles can hit the same target and all do damage. Maybe it is fine. Gods. But the fact that the um, the machine gun one explicitly says it can hit the same target makes me think that the multiple projectiles maybe don't shotgun. So if multiple projectiles normally hit the same target, they don't. And respec, yeah, we can respec easily in this game, which is really nice. Not without some cost, some slowdown, which I like. It's perfect. I don't, I want your build to matter. If you can literally just swap your stuff for every Stay single back. encounter, every time, Run. swap to the boss. Was, that was sort of my Diablo 3 problem. Then I feel like it's meaningless. I hit you. Okay, so my volcanic orb is just exploding on contact with. Oh, maybe it was just the thing in the middle. Maybe that thing in the middle was acting like a wall. Yeah, we're. Uh, I'm really kind of on the sad side here that we don't have um, our single target build. It's like physically hitting something there. Aromas. Yeah. We're going to be great as soon as we get one more tick and fireball. I'm actually wondering if it might be worth just using the glacier to try to deal with the boss here, but. Okay, here I, I think I legitimately can't hit him when he's in that. That's nothing to do with my spells. How's it going? We're getting some stacks of burn. I gotta remember I've got my teleport. Okay, yeah, this thing in the middle is blocking projectiles, even when it's down like that, and that's actually really annoying. I don't think I can hit him when he's there. Maybe I can, or maybe he's just still burning. No, all right, I'm definitely still hitting him there. You know, I should probably, do, I should rebind, like, what R is here, I should rebind that to spacebar. Because I keep trying to hit spacebar to dodge. So I should just make one of my action key slots do that, and then just be consistent about putting my traversal skills on my characters in that slot. Oop! Okay. 
By the time we get to the next boss, we should have more single target damage. It visually blocks, it still does damage. Oh, all right, maybe. You seem a little disoriented. This is what don't All right, so this is great. Show you how to tap now we're the end of time. This, all, this confused me the first time. You see the quest marker here, so I'm like, okay, I'll talk. No, wait, hold on. Where's 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 the quest? Like, oh, hold on. I gotta go in. Climb the staircase. Stairs. My old enemy. You so. I you come I, I, if I then you close your We're gonna try Rune Master? And focus on the potential you wish to wield as I guide the shape. Let's see what it's like to you. A savant. Savant of the art of runes, able to infuse magic into offensive and protective wards that devastate those who trespass them. So we passively get increased elemental damage. Cool. Increased cast speed with elemental spells. Cool. That all sounds very good. I, I like that. No complaints there. So this is the one thing you can't respec out of. Once you pick your mastery, that is locked for your character. Everything else is respectable, but this is like picking your character class. All right. Runic Invocation. So. <laughs> this is going to break my head, I'm sure. Whenever you directly use an so this is passive. Whenever you directly use an elemental skill, gain one rune of the corresponding element. For channeled skills, you gain one rune per second instead. Active. Consume all your active runes to cast a unique invocation based on the combination and order of the runes consumed. The last rune in the sequence determines the damage type. Casting a fire spell grants raw. Lightning is gone. Casting a cold spell gives you heal. Okay. So it doesn't actually tell us the list of all the spells we can use on it, right? Let's slot that in and see what happens when you go fire, fire, fire. Yeah, we become the invoker from Dota, which I've I never have attempted. Well, I have played technically when we were doing the 12 v 12, like a, like a Ram things all random in the middle or whatever. Uh, sometimes I would end up with invoker. And it didn't go well. <laughs> but all right. I see that you are still you. That strength will be necessary. If our world, our so hang on, have any hope, can I invest in this right away? No, no, there it is. 20. I was going to say, don't I need 20 in the base one? And I do. OK. So I'm still just going to do this. That gets us 20. So now that I've got 20 in the base, which I may or may not want here, I don't know. Uh, we might end up respecting all this. Now, when I level up some more, I can put points in Rune Master or Spellblade or Sorcerer. And that includes the ability is I can put enough into Sorcerer for Static Orb or Ice Barrage, but I can't go past here, for example. I think... Do I need this connection or is this just... No, that just happens to be there. If I put 30 in here, would I get access to Arcane Ascendance or is that also locked? I know I can't put anything, say, in Inferno in the Sorcerer because of this chain, but I don't, I don't know if the skills are still available. That is also locked. Okay. So the Rune Master also gains the access to stuff like Flame Rush. Turn into a ball of flame, launch yourself in the target direction. That sounds fun. Longer you hold down the key, the slower you move, but the larger and more damaging the explosion is when you stop channeling. And you take less damage during Flame Rush. Frost Wall. Enemies inside the wall take cold damage. Enemies that reach the wall. Um, at least 0.2 seconds after it's been created or frozen for twice as long. The wall existed. Okay. Later on, we get Rune Bolt, a combo spell that fires piercing projectiles. The first part of the combo is fire. Second is lightning. Third is cold. Glyph of Dominion. Places a lightning glyph on the ground that grows over time, deals lightning damage over time, and slows in its area. Full size detonates, dealing large amounts of lightning damage to the enemies within the area. You can have a maximum of one glyph at a time by default. 
I mean, it's going to be a while before we get there. And yet we have this runic invasion, invocation. So I put it on my E. So now I'm wondering, like, instead of Glacier, maybe I should load up a random lightning spell on there. All right, let's say we put down the lightning blast. Hey, what happens if we use the Nova? Or we could spec the Nova to lightning or something. Yeah, do we map R to space? Can we do double mapping? Can I have it mapped to two things? Okay, good. R, you're going to get mapped to space. What do you map to? Space is already in use. In use by what? Oh, see it. I mean, nothing seemed to happen when I click space when I play. Whatever. Replace. I think space skips dialogue. Okay. Well, whatever. Well, let's stay with my two specializations for now till we figure out how Runic Invocation works and what I might want to do with it. There is an old passage to the God be with you. I cannot do that. I definitely can't use space to skip dialogue now. Maybe I could before. May Terra smile upon you. Farewell. Greetings. Yeah, see, there we go. See, there's a quest here, but it's not noticeable. I think there was a slight blink around their character icon over here, but... Do not dwell on regrets. Okay. So first of all, what if I hit E just by itself? Well, apparently it gives me ward. Now... Oh, hold on. Was it showing me? Wordless invocation. Oh, there you go. Grants you a burst of ward. There we are. Okay, so if I cast a fire spell, now it's twin embers. Fires two embers in a spiral. Each one deals fire damage on hit. Added spell damage applies at 150 effectiveness. Each target can be hit no more than once per three seconds. Okay. Yunvar's eruption. Spews fire projectiles at nearby enemies, which each deal <laughs> damage in a small area. Presumably, maybe seeking because it says nearby enemies. And then three of them is Aragon's greater fireball. Is there a four? No. Okay, three is the most. I mean, that's so that's not bad. Now, lightning, one lightning, crackling glyph, lightning glyph on the ground that explodes. Okay, two lightning. Sea of Sparks. Series of Sparks under nearby enemies explode after short duration. Okay, I mean, there's no nearby enemies, but it just does it random. Okay. Three of them. Ball Lightning. Slow moving orb, target direction, four times a second, arcs from the orb to seven enemy, which sounds great. Yeah, that. I'm betting that one's awesome. Now, we're still using the Fire Staff right now, so I'll probably just go and do Fire Shit. What was the first one? Oh yeah, the twin embers around me. Probably won't do that one too often. The second one though, with the heat seeking like death balls, that's pretty cool. 
And then three was the super fireball. Which is very satisfying. I mean, I could precast as well. Huh. You know, I've never really felt the need to uh, look up guides for this game. But I think because the sheer variety... And we haven't even looked at the, like, the elemental combos yet. But because of the sheer variety of bullshit that this guy can do... Oh, I really wish my fireball were free. <laughs> I'd have to look... So, like, okay, so we have two fire right now. Let's do two fire and a lightning. Now I get echoes of thunder. Oh, this is... This is the same as the two lightnings. Or... Stormstar. What the... I mean, in the end, if... If I just do normal shit and then every now and again tap E, awesome things will happen. Mana, cast speed, intelligence. I mean, mana's good. Health is excellent. Less damage from ignited, shocked, or chilled enemies. Apply conditions, take less damage, and have more health. Hmm. And it leads to something that increases the chance to ignite, shock, or chill. Straight up just four more spell damage. And if you get this up to level seven, uh, if you have more current ward than the target is remaining health, you deal more spell damage. So if you go heavy on ward, you can do the crazy stuff with quintessence. Huh. Kind of like the idea of going down this middle thing. What's nice about this is we're also not locked into any particular element. As long as we're doing lots of statuses of whatever kind, you know, I can swap from one to a completely different build. It's going to do this. Oh, this replaces Armor Shred to Frostbite. Huh. Okay. Man, why did you guys break my brain? Mega Fireball. Oh, yeah. Then I have to remember, like, these different spells. It's not just press E to be awesome, but depending on what the spell is, make sure you're targeting the right thing. I like the double fireball and then the little spray. Not the most consistent landing. But it's not bad. What was one? Fireball? Oh yeah, the spin around me. Which isn't bad for like the cla trash clearing. Two, three, kaboom. Mm, it's not as kaboomy as I'd hoped. Oh, I guess I got the glyphs over my head. I kept looking down here. So yeah, if we miss fire and lightning, um, I think this one... Oh yeah, give me the Echo of Thunder, which I want to check. Because I thought that two lightning... Oh, it's Sea of Sparks. Feels... Close. That's pretty... So, okay. So, lightning, lightning, E, and fire, fire, E, both feel kind of similar. They're both a, we're going to, we're going to target and do some damage to some randos. The difference is the fire, fire, E one, there's a little bit of travel time, although maybe it seeks, whereas the lightning, lightning, E, it just appears underneath them. It does still have a little bit of a detonation timer, so maybe it comes out to functionally very similar. And then, um, let's say I throw in the Frost Claws here. <laughs> Rune Shard, Swirling, Piercing Shard. Oh, where my cursor is, presumably? Okay. Double Ice. Curse of Frost grants Ward on hit and 100% freeze rate. Added spell damage increased. Okay. Oh, okay, it goes that way. Okay. Triple Frost. Blizzard. Uh-huh. And if we got uh, Lightning, Frost, 
fire. I wonder if the order matters. Realms of Mayhan. Conjure three glyphs in a line in front of you. Explode brief delay. Oh yeah, no, the order matters. <laughs> Which, yeah, this is why there's so many goddamn combinations. I mean, this character has more spells than all the other classes combined. And yeah, the damage is based on the last element done, but apparently the actual the order of the spells you use also changes everything. So, you know, that's fun. Let's see what this does. Oh, we got a little fire spray in front of us. All right. Yeah, I think this is this class might be for someone who's better than me, but <laughs> big fireball. But you know, I don't have to use all of them. In theory, you get so good that you you use them um, for situations. But in practice, you might still be focused on a particular element. Like we can be a pure fire invoker. I mean, rune master, right? Even the level one swirl is not bad. But I think I'll be a lot of like the level two for clearing trash, or if they're clumped, then the level three for the fireball. You unlock a particular combination in the skill tree. Really? Changes the rune element first three in your bar. That's interesting. Well, let's let, Now that we've got a bit of a feel for how it works, let's take a look at the skill tree. Okay, this just grants mana refund and ward. Cast speed, ward. Uh, invocations at least one raw chance to ignite. Okay. Uh, invocations deal damage in area, have a bigger area. When you directly cast runic invocation, the next not. I wonder if there's ways to auto cast this. That would be great. Because this implies that, you know, there might be, but. Um, inscribe patterns. Runes will now provide you with passive effects while you have them. Oh! So, while you have a raw, which I think is from fire, while you have a raw rune, you get mana regen. If you have the lightning runes, you have ward. If you have the um, the chill, the, the cold one, then you have a freeze rate multiplier. Every second you go without casting runic invocation, you gain a stack of runic energy. Invocations consume all runic energy to deal more damage. Spell Cascade. When you directly cast Runic Invocation with at least 12 Runic Energy, you also proc a random equipped non-channeling skill of the same element of each runes consumed. This effect consumes those skills' mana cost and puts them on cooldown. That's quite cool. So if I'm not frequently casting my E, my actual Runic Invocation, if I'm not frequently casting it, it's going to stack up Runic Energy that gives me bonuses. And then when I do unleash it, it's going to do crazy-ass shit. Consume skills mana cost, puts them on cooldown. I wonder if it'll still cast them if they are on cooldown. It might be fun for like having some free meteors. Chance to repeat. While you have three runes and your combination of runes changes without casting into vacation, you gain runic energy. So I would have to cycle different elements. So I can't just keep it at three fire. I'd have to like three fire and then put in like one tick of lightning and then go back to fire or whatever. Okay, what else we got? Directly casting Runic Invasion, in Invocation now refunds its mana cost, deals more damage, it then it has a cooldown, which this combo is fairly well with the Runic Energy system. Immutable Order. Ah, whenever you gain a rune, instead of it depending on the type of skill cast, it always results in your sequence of runes mirroring the first three skills on your action bar from left to right. This effect ignores skills that don't have an elemental tag. Now, so then I don't have to worry about micromanaging the runes. This does sync up with the cooldown version. So you're still not spamming it, but okay. Casting runing, casting runic invocation. So after I cast my E, gain additional spell damage, cast speed. Word lag on. Invocations include at least one gone rune, which I think is the cold. Or no, lightning. Just chance to shock energy. Okay. Whenever you directly cast invocation, you blink to the target location first. But Runic Invocation now has a cooldown. Cast this way automatically targets a random nearby enemy. You know what? I kind of like the idea of giving it the traversal flag, and then I don't need to teleport anymore.
And yeah, fire, fire, lightning, and fire, lightning, fire, and lightning, fire, fire are all different things. Yes. This is the most complicated class there is. Uh, shortened cooldown. When you have three runes and your combination of runes change without casting invocation, remaining cooldown is done. I wonder if the other... So again, we keep seeing this directly cast. Now, it doesn't mean that there's necessarily a symbol system in place to cast it automatically, but there may be. I'm wondering if some of the other Rune Master skills have a chance to, like, maybe automatically trigger Runic Evocation. Because I like shit that, like, is automatic. Oh, this... Okay, this is something with Elemental Nova. When you cast Runic Innovation, you know, Invocation, when I hit my E... You also cast up to one of each type of elemental novas that you can cast directly. Each unique rune that you have when casting runic innovation, in, invocation represents different elemental novas. So for this, what I'd want to do is I want to use fire, ice, lightning, trigger this, and then it would triple proc elemental nova. Which I could then specialize in and make my elemental nova do some nutty things as well. Stride to safety. When I cast my E, I leap backwards, hovering the air a moment. In this state, you take less damage, and directly casting my E deals more damage. Oh! During the leap, you also cast the invocation corresponding to your first two ruins, consuming its mana cost. Wah! Money for Essentia. Money for Essentia. Good luck, Mr. Quill. Try not to avoid having your brain crash to a blue screen of death. Thank you. Um, look at this. Okay, so this is the Flame Dash. So this is the movement ability that the Rune Master gets. Okay, we were looking at it a minute ago. It sounds very cool. But then, with just three points in, we can get the Epilogue. You cast Runic Invocation when you exit Flame Rush, if you have it on your action bar. This effect consumes the mana, so, uh, and actually, it, it consumes additional mana, so 25% extra, but it would cast it automatically for me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love that there's a search bar in here. You can, you can do that. Um, power is it? Runeboat is now cast in sequence with the same order your most recent runic invocation. Casting Runeboat now randomizes the runes. Oh, hold on a second. There's a bunch of stuff in the invocation that says when the order changes, stuff happens. The Runebolt just reshuffles the order of them. So you can use the rune bolt to constantly reshuffle it and have the other things proc. Okay. Runic dominance has a cooldown, but it refreshes when you directly cast runic invocation. Huh. Now, just because we've unlocked the runic stuff doesn't mean you have to go. Although, I'm liking, like, fireball, fireball, E. That's mostly what I'm doing right now for clearing trash. Although, oh, right, I put these other things on. I kind of probably still want the volcanic orb. Big fireball. Like, little fireball, little fireball. If I triple cast it, then I get big fireball. I think this is still quite useful. I do like the idea of if I'm not casting it, maybe I can just generate these passives. I can probably do a big thing based around the idea of not casting this or saving it for the bosses, right? Getting the thing that like charges up points, but that generates the passive stuff. So like if I channel fire, I'll get a ton of mana regen. Um, I probably want to put in something. I wonder, okay, when it said the runic bolt um, randomizes, 
I wonder if it means it shuffles the order. So if I have like two fire and a lightning, then it might reshuffle it to lightning, fire, fire, or fire, lightning, fire. Or if it means it sets it completely at random. Regardless of what I have. Like if I had three fire and then I cast a spell, then it ends up frost, frost, lightning, you know, or just whatever. I guess I won't know until I've tried it, or someone in chat probably knows. I kind of like the idea. I mean, again, we're a rune master, so it feels like we should probably use the rune master stuff. I can see two possibilities. Either I base around the mostly don't cast it, take advantage of the passives, and generate huge amounts of runic energy for like killing a unique or a boss, and using the runic bolt to shuffle around a bunch. Or with the flame dash or whatever it's called. Um, massive overkill. Or with the flame dash, have the flame dash constantly cast the runic invocation for free as I use the teleport, which is going to be probably quite frequent. I mean, I don't know exactly how that feels, but I suspect. Kind of dumb timing. I am not a man of many pockets. Hmm. Sounds like all the two glyph spells are good for clearing cards. That's what it feels like. Although the three fireball is also pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to keep dumping points in here for now. I don't know. The thing is, we'll just get up to level five. We'll unlock flame rush. We'll see how that feels. What's my actual character level? 17. Okay, so we get our next specialization at 20. Still struggling to like figure out like what what cast pattern do I actually want to use? And without like we haven't specialized in it, so it's probably perfectly fine for me to just keep using ease to clear trash. Or not ease to use my volcanic orb. And then, yeah, if I get someone with a name that, like, the Volcanic Orb doesn't really do the job for, or even this group here, it's a big fireball. I'm surprised you didn't die. Did you, like, dodge? Well, I guess the downside is right. My Volcanic Orb costs more mana. I say, the Runic Invocation is pretty damn cheap. I'm actually wondering if the better thing, rather than build towards having my fireball being the boss killer... Oh, this is the thing that's going to summon the, uh... The weird wizard. I wonder if I can take him this time. E ah! I can't believe you fucking dodged my mega fireball. He's taking no damage! These mages are crazy. What kind of rewards you get for killing him? Kill just jackass anyway, who's kind of in the way. So, hang on, when I get to triple, how much does this cost? 59, or 56. So the mega fireball still... I wonder what's what the optimal there's probably an invocation here that's great for single targets. But I don't know what it is. I mean how come I can't be right now? Oh because I'm out of mana. Because that's not gonna be it. The spin's not very helpful. It's probably different elements. I mean I don't even know if it's worth dropping the fireball. It's so mana expensive, like the mega fireball. I might just be better off just continuing to just right click my fireball. I really need this to rank up one more time. Oh, shit. It's there. There you go. Hang on. Here, eat machine guns. Machine gun fireballs. There we go. And we can add more. Um, well, that was good timing. I mean, it's probably been sitting there for a while. Um, we can go and add more projectiles to this. Yeah, we're getting. Oh, it's got a minus 50%. I'm like, am I, aren't I supposed to be getting three projectiles right now? But it's got the minus 50% in there.
eat Mega Ball. One, two, E. One. It's actually a little harder to um to gauge the things because the the because it's got a multi shot going on here, the animation's a little longer. I don't think this is the fastest way to generate the charges because it's not the fastest cast. Oh, level 18. I say this, the machine gun fireball is working out pretty well already. Join challenge chat. It's like, have I though? I feel bad that I haven't been using Volcanic Orb. It's making me think now maybe it's the time to respec out of Volcanic Orb. Because what do I need it for? I was using Volcanic Orb to clear trash. But now I can just double tap Fireball and then tap E. I mean, it's got some setup, but it's not like the Fireball isn't also damaging shit, you know? I am not a man of many pockets. Oh. I didn't realize I clicked on his own transition. Uh, I did. I did equip the fire starters torch. Yeah. We haven't actually looked at our um, gear upgrades in a bit either. So we're going to be due for that. Greetings. Farewell. Um, what I'm thinking. is I'm going to start being a little more strict. I want at least five stats worth of stuff. And there's a good chance that the stats aren't even going to be something we're interested in, but... Um... And since I'm, I equip myself with so many uniques... And again, long term, the uniques aren't going to be... aren't going to be better than what I can pick up on the ground. The idea here is just... Oh, you can buy these Runes of Shattering, which is actually not a bad thing to do from time to time here. Um... Uh, sorry, lost my train of thought for a sec. Um, the uniques are just going to be, again, build the finers, but right now they're, they're kind of nice as a pickup. Uh, the shield was nice for defense, but I don't think we need as much. We're actually a little on the tough side. So let's, for the sake of argument, we'll throw that in for now and then sell you. I'm probably, I'm probably going to keep the Tome of Elements for quite some time. I think Avarice is fairly handy for us, too. It's got tons of resistance. So um, the green items, these are set items. So if you get obviously more things in the set, then they do stuff. Uh, I feel like, again, I don't know if things have changed, but I felt like they weren't that interesting. I guess I have it set to show all the, the white level versions of those. A lot of Ignite. I think we're going to be good with the uh, Firestarter's Torch for a while. So I'm just going to just sell these items as is. And we might want to shatter some, but they're all low level, so probably not. Prism Warps is going to be good for elemental damage, probably for a while. Although the Scholar's Adapter Orbs have the built-in elemental damage. Yeah, we're fine. So again, the shield. No. No, no, no. Let's save some of these idols. Uh, I suspect we're going to want to change some more jewelry around. Snowblind's not... Not crazy for us right now. But that helmet's not a replacement. That's going to be fine. We can get some resistances. We could do a little bit of forging on it too. I guess Snowblind was, was more exciting when we were using cold spells. We're not as much anymore. I'll throw this on. We might consider... Um, I think we'll, we'll do a little forging for what we've got. Yeah, sell that. Now, jewelry-wise, I think Gambler's Fallacy is still fun for us right now. Poison Cold, Lightning Resistance, Dodge. We clearly need some better rings. 
This has got increased fire damage and some physical resistance. All right, so let's um, let's forge up this ring. Uh, we could re-roll the physical damage. I mean, there's a good chance it's not going to land on something useful. I don't know that we need more damage. I might just want more resistances. What are we lowest on? Cold, physical, poison, necrotic. The Rune of Shattering Loot replaces soon. I click on one of these, but I'll double check. Yeah. Um, we might be past the poison thing, but. Did it critical success and increase a different affix? I don't think I've seen that before. I think the critical successes were just doing the free, um, the free crafting, the no forging potential, just doubling what the Glyph of Hope did. The fact that that must be new because I did a lot of crafting uh, before. I mean, new because I did a lot of crafting before. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's kind of cool. And Sense Vise is maybe going and fixing things like if that crit had landed on the physical damage, I'd be pretty sad. Okay, we'll just level up some of these defenses. OK, no more forging potential, but that's fine. That was quite the upgrade. Um, at over here. Oh, I like this fireball pierce chance, right? So you can see some some like really different runes. I only have one copy of this, so I don't want to use it now. But this adds a percentage chance for my fireball to go through an enemy and continue to hit things behind it. Not as useful if I'm using fireball as a boss killer, but if we're using um, fireballs as trash clear, that would be fantastic. Yeah, some of these are very rare. Um, just adding intelligence or just adding vitality, kind of solid. I kind of like, I usually like to add vitality all over the place. We don't have anything that scales on vitality, but it gives us hit points. Maybe it's less important for this character than I'm thinking, but you know, it's pretty good. All our shit scales off of int. We don't have to stress too much about our crafting at this time. I could. So the other thing you can do, right, is with this, as I can, um, reroll it. Um, I guess it's not these, it's probably the Glyph here. Glyph of Chaos modifies the outcome. So if I do this, this is going to level us up from a tier one to a tier two, but then swap what this is to something else. Could be something garbage, but could be something more useful. So we've got we've got options, but. Um, I think we need some cold resist. Let's just throw some of that in there. Good enough. I think the crafting system is great. Again, it's deterministic and random, which doesn't normally sound like two things that go together. But you get to pick what you're leveling up or I mean, with the chaos one, obviously, it's very random. But otherwise, you get to pick what you're doing, but you don't know how much you're going to get out of your forge potential because the amount of forging potential that gets used per craft is variable. And sometimes you get it for free. Yeah. And so with crafting, you can get things up to tier five. You can get drops. They're called exalted items. Uh, those are items that have tier six or tier seven on them. And then you get some really weird shit. So this unique here, right? Uniques are unique. They're fixed. Uh, sometimes there's range, like for the fire starters torch, maybe it's got somewhere between 40% and 60% increased fire damage over time. I, I, I don't know. I don't. Oh, it does tell us actually. Oh, the range is 42 to 72 for the increased fire damage over time. Well, hey, I got a, I got a bad version of this, but I do have a pretty good version of the 38% more fire damage to enemies afflicted by spreading flames. Hey, how cool is that? Um, so, you know, but more or less the uniques are, are kind of sort of fixed within a certain range. The legendary potential is this funky thing where you take a unique and you take an item with it with that exalted that has at least one thing that's tier six or tier seven. And then you make them kiss and have a baby. And what happens is the unique then gets one of the traits 
from the rare item. It pulls one of those affixes and attaches it to itself. And theoretically, you can get items with as high as legendary potential at four, although there's it comes in leveling comes into play. So very high level uniques uh, generally like might only be able to get level one point of or two of legendary potential, whereas lower level uniques might be able to get legendary potential four, which is amazing because a lot of times in these games, the early game uniques you get, some of them might be really cool, but they don't scale to the late game. But now all of a sudden you've got this ability to take a really high level um, rare item with lots of great affixes on it and just inject it into a low level unique. So you keep some sort of quirky feature of the unique with all the other stats. It's beautiful. I love it. I thought it was brilliant. I haven't actually gotten around to doing it yet. When a mommy legendary and an exalted daddy love each other very much. Exactly. Thank you. I'm still a little scratchy. And I should have had tea earlier in the run. But the voice is mostly better. Watching the first Pocket Wars, Wars DF series. Love the fort. Looks very good. Yeah, uh, a Pocket Wars series. I mean, the, the first one we did on stream was great fun. And the, um, the current uh, YouTube run is being great. So yeah, I think this crafting system in this game is wonderful. The only thing I'm worried about is A, I, there needs to be good like late game content. Um, B, there needs to be enough uniques that like break and change the mechanics to allow for a lot of build diversity. You don't need more, you don't need more classes. You don't need more um, skill tree options. As long as there's a bunch of uniques that somehow transform how a class works, that's where your build diversity comes from. So there needs to be a good pool of that. And of course, that can build up over time. With every patch, you add another dozen uniques. Um, can I talk to you? Oh, I gotta defeat the Void Centipede. Oh. I gotta say, single um, fighting a single boss with just adding this little spinny thing is actually not a bad source of extra damage. One fireball, E. One fireball, E. Well, I think it might end the cast prematurely. Oh, what was there was a third thing. Sorry, for like, but this needs to be successful. Um, right, end game sort of content, build diversity via adding more legendaries, and the 1.0 release has to not be buggy as fuck. Excuse my Ataran. But yeah, the, uh, the 0.9 patch, which added the multiplayer, I was very disappointed by the quality control. And I think they did themselves a huge disservice by releasing that patch in kind of a buggy state and not finding a way to address it. Where the frack am I going here? Am I just done in the zone? I might just be done in the zone. Yeah, the fact that they do have offline, or if the servers are having a hard time, is good. Although, I will feel like I'm going to be a little disappointed if I'm progressing in a character that doesn't matter. So that's plus one projectile per point. We're only getting half here. So we're currently at three. So it must be rounding up, because this is giving me a total of two projectiles. So putting a point in Dancing Fire currently... Oh! These additional projectiles are not reduced by the extra projectiles penalty by the Amber Denote. Okay, I was worried that putting a point in here wouldn't give me an extra fireball because it would bring me to four, which would still round, would still have the two. But this is going to count. I think it's going to make the uh, fireball animation that much more kind of awkward to play with. So I haven't been using Volcanic Orb. We finally did get to the point where I can put in Dense Orb over here. Turn offline's not fully offline.
Wait, you can't play offline mode if your internet's down? Uh, but wow, that's a good question. On the skills page, why are some circles and other hexagons? So the hexagons tend to be, um, I think, well, a lot of times there are only one pointers, but that's not entirely, I think they tend to be more transformative as a general rule. Like this makes it into cold. This causes it to create a fire glyph. Whereas if we look here, it just changes your stats, changes your stats, changes. That's all. There's nothing mechanically different. It's just, I think, an indicator that these are sort of the, the capstone, more transformative abilities. I mean, that does throw out more strap. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with the uh, the spell, right? This volcanic orb is cool. I think it's just redundant. Uh, I mean, it's semi-redundant with our um, our invocation. On the other hand, if I'm just going through clearing trash, orb, wait a bit, orb, wait a bit, E, I mean, that's that's some trash clearing there. I gotta remember as well that my flame shield is also, you know, a fire spell and will contribute to orbiness. Oh yeah, now if we do this, you see, is pretty good. Eat fireball, eat mega ball. Small fireballs, small fireballs, eat many balls. Oh, I don't want to get stomped. So I think I should probably spec out of Volcanic Orb. Even if I don't necessarily know what I want to put my points in for the... Uh, oh, there you go. We got our first red tag item. Again, that's just my... Uh, click you with my mouse in the wrong position. Um, that's just... Where are you going, buddy? Uh, that's just my loot filter, but this is something with at least seven affixes that I tagged as being important. Seven, seven levels worth. So it's got tier one of intelligence, which I flagged as important. It's got two tiers of physical resistance, two of armor. Oh, and I think because it's got movement speed as the on the base, I think that's contributing as well. Maybe even the armor as well. So and admittedly, that's a pretty good set of boots. And it's not like the lessons of Metropolis were something specific to my build in any way whatsoever. The nice thing is these um, these new boots also have some forging potential, so I could go and increase the stats of one of these things. Wouldn't have as much movement speed, because less than Metropolis have a total of 15%. But yeah, physical resistance is pretty good. Lots of things hit you for physical. So just being able to take less is going to be okay. All right, let's um, put a passive in here. Let's despec out a Volcanic Orb. And we'll throw in the runic invocation. And I don't know where we're going to go. Um, what is the... What is the word I'm looking for? It's like order? Right, no, not that one. Um... Doesn't one of these have... Isn't here somewhere that it's like the... If the order changed? But I don't remember what, what word they used. It's the, the idea that if the order of my runes changed around without you me using the invocation, stuff happens passively. Was it not... Oh, yeah, here. There we go. While you have three runes and your combination runes changes without casting gain. So maybe if I look for combination, because I felt like there was more than one. I guess it's literally just two. So there's rune power core. When you have three runes, your combination changes. You gain runic energy, which is unlocked by this. Gain stack runic energy up to a maximum. How do I know what my maximum three per point in here? So 15 points. And this is when you have three and your combination changes, runic invocations remaining cooldown is reduced. Maybe the auto shuffle isn't actually a very interesting tech. Because the idea was we could use rune bolt 
Although that's not for ages. We don't get rune bolt for ages. You get rune bolt to auto shuffle your runes and then have it do something. I'm still wondering about the version where this doesn't cast very often. Although we're, we're having a lot of fun spamming it. After casting it, you gain additional spell damage and cast speed for a short amount of time. Blink forward after cast. Right, this is the one that turns into a mobility spell. Budget. Maybe I'll just do that. Although, we're about to unlock the freaking Flame Rush mobility spell. I think mobility spells share a cooldown. Like, uh, these things with the traversal tag, I think everything with the traversal tag has the same cooldown, doesn't it? Or some shit? Oh, the free Novas was cool. Actually, there was Novas in this as well, right? Yeah. Runic indications deal more damage per runes consumed. Damage per type of rune. Yeah, we're mostly just generating a bunch of fire. This branch here really, really emphasizes doing all three elements. Same thing with the multi Nova. generates ward every time I hit E. Oh yeah, here's ward of Raya. So here, if I'm just doing fire, this gives us a shite ton more ignite chance with fire per... Oh, it's as long as you have at least one. So it's not per ruin, but still. When you consume runes with a skill other than runic invocation, you have a chance to also cast the corresponding invocation to those runes. Hold on. So some of the school skills must consume the runes. I'm sorry, Flame Rush now casts Volcanic Orb? Directly casting remote now creates a rune stone in front of you. You have a nearby one to cast two bolts. If you have three runes from runic invigation, when you create a rune stone, the runes are consumed and instead create an imbued rune stone that fires three bolts. Hold on. I mean, we're still a million levels away from getting rune bolt. But rune bolt would consume the runes automatically, which then trigger. Mastery of the Invoker. When you consume runes with a skill other than Runic Invocation, you have a chance to also cast a corresponding invocation of those runes. This sounds like Ultimate Lazy Mode. Will the Sense Rune Master be good? Maybe, because you generate one rune per second channeled. It might be a little awkward or it might be awesome. I kind of like the idea of doing this. And in the meantime, we go down the tree where we get some ward, we get some increased cast speed, we get elemental pen in area. I love some lazy, yeah, that's the thing. Um, there's a bunch of these, and this is one of the things that drew me into the game. There's a bunch of builds you can make for this that sort of auto plays itself. The Druid um, or whatever, Primalist, is that what it's called? Um, has a bunch of things where like, I'm using one ability and it's triggering all four of my, own, my other abilities all at the same time. Love it. Okay, so that's gonna be the plan. And yeah, it's gonna take a while before we get to uh, Rainbow. I'm just trying to move around with uh, WSD over here, which. Turns out it wasn't working. Eat blizzard. Q. E. That's not the button. Eat two. Part two video of War Hospital is missing on YouTube. Is it? I... Hang on, let me make a note about that to check. Ooh, eat a Mega Ball. So I'm still unsure of what our 
sequence looks like when we're fighting a boss. I mean, maybe we just fireball three times and then mega ball them, but I mean, it's mostly AOE. It does give spreading flame, which is interesting. Um, let me, there's my little note over here. Back for war hospital part two. Okay, I'll do that after the stream. Volcanic Orb is good, but expenses fan. And the thing is, like, arguably I don't need any more because the invocation in either the Mega Ball or the whatever this number two is, the Unvar's Eruption, is a good way to get some splash damage. Oh, I think it resets your uh, invocations when you zone. Which, I mean, a lot of games do do that. Path of Exile, a lot of stuff doesn't carry between zones. I guess that's one of the things I like about Grim Dawn as well, is not much zoning, but that's one of the benefits you get from not randomly generating content. I don't like that it's not killing things. Oh, right, my Volcanic Orb doesn't have uh, ranks anymore, so it's not going to feel as good. Okay, we get our next specialization slot. Maybe I could have just waited a level to do that. But, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now we get Flame Rush. I'm going to throw Flame Rush into this. We're going to replace the Teleport with Flame Rush. So, if I just tap it... Wait, it is. Wait, what? Oh! It's bugged. It's visually bugged. I'm tapping this. I'm actually over here right now. As soon as I click the move, look, I'm actually there. Because it's launching myself where that is. Oh, wait. Okay, it's fine as long as I hold it for like more than zero seconds. Oh, okay, maybe it's working now. Yeah, okay. Temporary bug. Um, that is actually pretty damn- oh, I forgot that I was on the Mega Fireball here. That is actually fairly damaging. I think I'm gonna like that spell. Oh. Huh. Now, I'm not convinced, like, I can't use it as a mo movement accelerator. Well, with the single tap, yes. But it barely goes anywhere, right? The hold down goes a lot further, but I don't think it's actually saving me any travel time. But for class and trash clearing, it's got some potential. Oh. Okay, it's, it's gonna need some getting used to. Okay, hold on. It doesn't move you immediately. Hold on, I'm, I'm wrong about this. I forget, I, I I was getting confused because of the uh, the glitch. I forget it does move you instantly. Okay, hold on. If you master all the elements, make you the avatar. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of that vibe. I guess there's only the three elements. I think I was stuck on a uh, train there. Classic quill issue. That's nice because I can sort of just kind of hold down the space bar. And then as soon as the cooldown comes up, it sends me forward. And then just as it's like nearing where it starts to slow down, you just release the fireball, the thing. Okay. Oh, I expect fireball. No, right. Oh, I didn't, I didn't finish it. Okay. Oh, it's because I clicked on it and I didn't spend a point because I'm like, well, I don't know where I want to spend a point, but I want this to start accumulating um, XP. So there was this route down here. 
We're gonna auto cast the invocation. I mean, it's just one point. As long as this route is fine. Mm, frenzy buff, which I think is cast speed. I mean, we could go down there and do this and just see how that feels. Actually, yeah. And then where do we go? Casting Fireball and then using Flame Rush in the same direction within two seconds causes that Flame Rush to deal more damage in a larger area and gra grants... What the going on there? Whenever you hit an enemy with Fireball during Flame Rush, it causes Runic Burst around the target. Okay, well, we've obviously got some Fireball... Flame Rush synergy happening. I don't have to rush Mastery of the Invoker, because that's not going to happen until we get the Runic Blast anyway. But we could have it constantly generating Ward? So, okay, now... Okay. I cannot. Do oh, I'm in. A, I'm in a town here. Hmm. Farewell. This is going to be a boss fight, so a lot of this isn't going to matter because we're mostly just going to be using our fireball here. Frostfire fire looks good for single target, really. So, Fireball, bigger explosion, and then it auto-casts the other spell. Oh. Hang on a second. Maybe this is actually good with this integrate, because this says you get a charge for every second you channel it. The Flame Rush is a channel thing, but I get one charge instantly. And then I get a second charge as I keep holding it. Um. <laughs> I'm liking this. I don't even need the Fireball. The Fireball just makes the Flame Rush explosion bigger. Yes. Are you? Oh, you. I mean, with this, I'm probably just gonna. Okay, I gotta change my keybinds to get my uh, my order sorted. Because the problem is, it's like I'm doing. Like mouse, this, that. Um, so sort of this R, man, that hold R. Oh, I don't have to E. Right. It's just fireball, space bar. Or well, I guess I have to wait for the space bar cooldown, but not not so much for the boss fight, I don't think. But. Especially with the boss fight, I might be using my space bar to dodge bullshit. Boss fight, I can I can just keep right clicking the fireball. Although, yeah, um, you said frost, so not this order because this is the wrong order. This is the spiral. If I do frost, fire, fire, ignitious rain pelts the target area with a barrage of meteorites. I mean, it's still an area spell, but multiple hits. Yeah, it might be good for a boss fight. But I like if I don't cast the fireball first and I just do the long hold flame rush, then it does the level two fire spell. And just, you know, sprays stuff in an area. Okay, I gotta admit, this rune master is pretty freaking cool. Hard as hell to play. So the problem with um, uh, classes like this. Right, and mostly I'm thinking of 
from the point of view, especially of uh, if we're comparing it to something like Invoker or or whatever, uh, and like MOBAs and stuff like that. This is clearly a class with a high skill ceiling. And that can be tricky to balance because new players or shitty players like me won't use the abilities that effectively. Therefore, they have to be, you know, relatively strong because the effectiveness of use will be low. But skill players are going to be able to do insanely stupid bullshit overpowered stuff. So what tends to happen is you get really good players that break this and um, lead to nerfs that make the class too not good enough for players who are bad, which is probably exactly what's going to happen. This is probably going to get balanced for people who can actually make insane use of these abilities. Oh, do I have to fireball to get the trigger off? I guess I do. No. Hang on, how do I fireball? There we go. It is the fireball and then cast, and then that triggers the invocation. Okay. I, I, I feel like I rambled there. I didn't necessarily do a good job getting my point across, but if you have to balance it for people who are good, then yeah, bad players aren't going to be able to use this class because they'll be like, oh, this class sucks. And we're like, and it's going to be the ultimate example of a get good scrub. Fireball increases your flame dash damage as well. Right. Money for Essentia. Money for Essentia. I was watching Australian MasterChef the other day, and one of the contestants for the dessert challenge made this double layer meringue. Everyone clapped and cheered for it, which I thought was odd, because normally in Australia don't we boo meringue? No. No, 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 boo. Can we get some boo in chat. Here's an interesting thing. We've been uh, we've been picking up like we did some things to increase our crit somewhere. I can't remember now anymore. Um, right. Knowledge destruction over here. Right. Um, and we could focus on crit. If we do, if we take rune word cataclysm, first of all, this further increases our critical chance, which is great. And if we put at least five points into this, then when we crit, we gain rune word cataclysm for six seconds, which grants us more damage to enemies on low health. I don't know what the low health... 35%, there you go. So it helps us like finish things off. But it's also just more crit, and if we're building towards crit, that seems good, and I kind of feel like crit's fun. Crit leads to big numbers. So if I don't... Oh no, if I fireball first, it does invo... But do I have to channel it for a certain distance for the invocation to go off? Or maybe it was a lack of mana. Yeah, okay, it was probably just not enough mana, that's why it wasn't actually releasing. So the fireball part of it was just... Deal more damage, and gives us mana back. Okay. Damage, area, mana back. So I don't need to cast the fireball ahead of time. Yeah, I kind of feel like with this build, all I'm going to do is hold spacebar down all the time. Well. I'm getting confused, like, with my own... Well, you know what I appreciate? Because one of the arguments that people have made against this game is maybe it's, it's too, too noob-friendly, too simple. Um, this class definitely removes that argument. Uh, this is the Rune Master class, which is one of the masteries of the mage. I, I, the only thing I want in life is Flame Dash. I would be so happy if we could like, let's remove this cooldown on Flame Dash. And just spam this all day long. 
All oh, right, am I getting the ward? Yeah, so that's the other thing with the build right now. As I flame draft, dash in the middle of things. Do this, get some free ward. Since I am appearing in the middle of enemies. Oh. Oh, we got another one of those mages. Did we get a good reward from killing this guy? I don't think we did, but we may have just gotten, like, unlucky. I'm just going to fireball him three times in a row. And then trigger my E. Again, I don't know if the fireball is, or the, the, the mega ball, the E, I don't know if it's particularly effective against him, but we are getting some extra adds. And it does generate a little bit of spell shield for me. I suspect it's my, my regular fireball, my right click, that's doing the majority of the damage against this guy. We hit the axe. Yeah, he did drop a bunch of stuff. So he definitely drops more. I'm not sure it's time efficient to fight them currently. I'll simply use a jump. I mean, jump is like all the logic, right? It's <laughs> like the jump if. Like if statements are jumps. Fours and wiles are all just jumps, right? Holding down the space bar, waiting for the cooldown to come up. I want those ruins, though. They drop special affixes for your fight. Oh! Oh, so my filter, because it's old, might be missing something. Like special affixes on gear or a rune. Oh, what the hell is this experimental shit? Is that the shit they drop? What's this personal shit? This is all new. Oh, I probably missed out on some cool shit. Okay. So I can't just... So experimental is not a rarity. But I guess I could add a... At the very top. Like this, just show all experimental. I'll be able to spot them more easily now. Careful doing gifts since I'm stuck in the menu. Hey, uh, Dunno. Uh, yeah, I'm. Daniel? Daniel. Probably Daniel. I'm so sorry I missed the gift subs, and I apologize if I missed some earlier. I've been very focused on the game. I'm having a great time. I'm so happy we did this today. I mean, I would have been pretty happy with, um, with Vicky 3 as well. But Vicky 3 is still going to happen. It's just going to be a YouTube series. I guess I'm up to four fireballs now. And I guess someone was saying, like, each fireball can individually crit, so there's, like, more chances of proccing things that care about crits. Like, things triggered on a crit. The fact that my filter is not filtering for apexes or whatever on those relics makes me think of change there. No, I guess I was just I'm always picking up those relics. Oh, whatever? I don't know. Big kaboom. 
Money for essentia. Money for essentia. What do you call a clown who makes beer? A brew ha ha. My optometrist opened a new office. It's a sight for sore eyes. My friend is studying art and philosophy at uni. Now he can draw a conclusion. <laughs> okay, those were all top notch. Those are all really good. Really good. All right, let's get some extra crits going on. All right. Um, when you hit an enemy with a fireball during flame rush. Wait, during flame rush? So I have to immediately flame rush. Because the fireballs still have to be in the air. Or... Yeah. Hmm, I don't know if I have the APM for that these days. Oh, fire resistance shred. Oh, that's fucking sweet. That's what we're going for. Now, I could have gotten there through solar rush instead. Oh. I mean, the Guidance of Flames is cool. But I'm not consistent with the combo. Yeah, no Flame Rush needs to be cast. Exactly. I, I mean, for the Guidance of Flames, the Flame Rush has to be cast within four, two seconds of the Fireball. This has to be cast even sooner because you have to start your Flame Rush before the Fireball hits the target. Which I'm thinking makes it maybe more interesting to the boss. You like fireball towards the target, the, the boss, then rush into him, and then it does things. But I'm actually wondering about dropping Guidance of Flames and just putting uh, the point in the Solar Rush. I only also need one point in Solar Rush to reach Smolder and Burn. It's Fire Eater. Whenever you pass through an ignited enemy, you gain ward and consume all your ignite stacks on the enemy. Consuming your ignite stacks this way grants you ward per ignite stacks, but doesn't deal their remaining damage. Huh. Mark of the Forbidden Flame. Whenever you pass through an ignited enemy with Flame Rush. So, okay, this whole area over here is all about making sure you fireball people and, ru and rush towards them and consume a bunch of shit. Instead of gaining ward per stack of ignite on the enemy and consuming your ignite stacks, you lose 12 ward per stack of ignite and the ignite stacks instantly deal the remaining damage to the enemy. You do not have enough ward for this effect. A percentage of your remaining health is consumed instead up to a maximum. Huh. 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 Yeah, there was the, uh, right here. Flame Rush now casts Volcanic Orb that is attached to you and only detonates when you end Vol uh, Flame Rush. So this would be, if we were still specced in Volcanic Orb, you could do this combo, which is cool. Um, let's look for anything that might change the cooldown of this, although I suspect... Oh! Blazing Flux. Costless mana, shorter cooldown. The effects are doubled if you have enough uncapped fire resistance. If we have up to 150% fire resistance. Now, only... Yeah, so your fire resistance caps to 75%. You can keep equipping more gear and things with fire resistance, and that's your uncapped. So if we had 150% uncapped fire resistance, our actual fire resistance would still only be to 75%. But that would double the benefits of Blazing Flux. Now, right now, it's only 9% cooldown recovery speed. It's not a huge deal. Even at 18%, it's not the end-all and be-all, but it would let us do it more. Every 0.4 seconds during Flame Rush, you create a Rune Ember up to a maximum. Every 0.25 seconds while not in a Flame Rush, you fire Rune Ember at nearby enemies if you have any. This feels like the hold down the button. Oh, this also generates rune embers on kill during flame rush. Here's, I mean, this is this is the trash clearing constellation is what it feels like. Whenever you pass through a frost wall during flame rush, cause explosion. Put down frost wall, flame rush through it. Wow. Flame rush now casts glyph of dominion at the target location instead of channeling. And the flame rush ends when reach the glyph. Hang on a second. This sounds like a better teleport. You 
You just instantly go. Or maybe you don't instantly go, but you don't hold it down anymore to decide how far you go. You just click and you're going to flame rush to that point. And it's also going to tar- trigger a glyph of dominion. Fudge and hell, this game is good. Do you, get, do you guys think it's good? I think it's good. I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to go and remove this point. Now, I'm not going to have this point to spend immediately. I have to re-earn it, but that's going to be okay. I think I might focus on the Blazing Flux instead. I think this is still worth casting. Oh, I guess I only need... Hang on, I only need one point in a Fiery Overload. So I think I'll do the, just the one. Yeah, a lot of viable options. And it's one of those um, where there's this weird cascade. Because you're looking like, okay, if I get this in skill one, that can enable this in skill two. Now that in skill two sort of combos with something in skill three, but skill three implies a different combination in skill one. And then everything also gets messed up when I start thinking about skill four and how I want to fold that in here. So you get this like web of interconnected trees where there's usually not like a perfect, like one size fits all combo. Like, oh, I just get these five skills and I spec them this way and everything synergizes in exactly one sense and one sense only. Usually you're going to be generating two or three semi overlapping synergies, which is good. I think that's that's great game design. Game gives you a headache, but at least doesn't make you consider antidepressants like War Hospital. Where am I going for this? I guess south. Oh, there's a rift. All right. Well, let's check it out. Rip Blood Warlock might be next build once patch drops. I never played around that much with Rip Blood, but the combo seemed excellent. Especially you could have. I know you can have things that. So this is the Acolyte build. That's like the um, uh, the witchy caster looking person. I think for like quickly navigating these areas with trash, it's the optimal thing might be to just hold it down to get to the, the two tick like that and then let it go off. And it's just going to routinely kill some of the random trash that's following you. If you're of the kind of speedy, let's just traverse this as quickly as possible kind of vibe, which I think is probably the quickest way to level. Um, I'm going to keep putting points in the crits and then nothing's changed over there, which is fine. We'll walk a little bit and then hold it down. This one's going to be the mega fireball regardless. Yeah, see, I'm just going to ignore you holding down space and then just releasing it when it gets to the two kicks. Same thing. Hold down. Oh, I hit a wall that does stop you. Oh, I guess there was some geometry there that stopped me as well. Awkward. There you go. The double kick. sort of killing some things behind me. It's possible we're losing out on some loot. Oh, I think this might be, I think I could progress. I'm not sure, maybe not. And then when I'm fighting something more serious, it's probably chain fireballs and then drop the big mega ball after it. Something like that. Dude, no, this is a dead end here. Okay. Where the heck am I going? Oh, probably up here. Okay. The um, the level two invocation doesn't seem to be that good at targeting. The level two lightning ones seem to be really good at targeting and landing on trash. This one feels a little inconsistent. Uh, I keep thinking I can go through that like a tunnel. I think mostly because there's a lot of those sort of tree tunnels in the Ash of the Mammoth expansion for Grim Dawn. Well, I bet you you have fire resistance, but you know what? We just do one thing and we do it well. So just keep eating fire. Uh. 
And yeah, as much as I like Grim Dawn, we don't... I mean, this is not the world's most interesting fight. But it feels like I'm eating, like, er, I'm fighting a primeval dragon. He doesn't really fly around too much. He looks like he's made out of some sort of, like, cooling magma. I dig it. I also feel a lot sturdier, like, I'm really not using a lot of health pots. I think it's because partially we are generating, like, random ward and things like that. So I've maxed this out for the maximum ward. I'm... I guess I'm not going Mastery of the Invoker, at least not right now. Do I still want to come down here? Yeah, I still want... You know what? I want to get um, the uh, the Ignite chance. Because we've got a few things that combo with Ignite. Now that's not the button I'm trying to hit. Am I just... To finish this area okay so let's go back over here what i like is you can click on one of these quests and it will i mean if you're in the wrong era like you click oh, no. apparently i'm wrong but normally it sent you there maybe it's because i manually clicked the something beforehand i don't know so we've got a couple of different paths the main quest is over here let's do this side quest first Or the icons below the boss health bar. I think those were the um, the conditions I was inflicting on it. Like ignite. Hello. Unique body armor. What is? Uh, it's the doublet of Onus Tull, which I have multiple copies of. So, yeah, I'm trying to get to the runes of Welrin. I'm... Is that the door for it? Can I not already go through there? Maybe I went through there but didn't finish a quest? No, that's the cultist camp. Did it have uh, LP, legendary potential? It did not. So I'll probably just sell it. I don't think there's anything else to do with, like, redundant uniques. I don't think you can, like, glue a bunch of them together. Right, so, oh, hold on. This is the one where I was killing these for the Lich. Did I not go through that portal? No, it was here. This is where the Lich was, and I went through there to the cultist camp. How do I get to the other place? Maybe I should just go to the cultist camp and then go north. Out of there. Let's just do that. I cannot do that. Yeah, okay. There we go. I'm in the right zone. Well, I mean, I knew what zone I had to get to. I just thought I could get to it from the other zone, but maybe that's not the case. Oh, I had been here. I just did the two out of three. I didn't finish the quest when I was here because there was probably another quest. And so I just finished that one and then left. Oh, this is really satisfying right now. Oh, these... Okay, I've got to kill you. There we go. That's done. Ooh, unique helmet. Don't mind if I do. Eat a mega ball. Eat tiny balls. Level up the fireball some more. Um... Increase base crit chance. That's interesting because um, someone in chat probably knows what the base crit chance for a spell is. Because when I'm... What, what am I looking for here? When I'm doing this and it's, see it's adding... Um, so this is adding 48% critical chance. It's increased critical chance. 
it's increasing the base. It's not, this is not meaning that I'm critting half the time or whatever it's starting with. It's whatever the base is. It's 5%, there you go. So with this, let's say this is the only thing increasing my crit chance. I've gone from 5% crit chance to 7.5% crit chance is what this is. Increasing the base is actually crazy though. I think this is worth doing. Oh, it's all on the seat, the, the screen. Um, critical strike chance. Right, base critical strike is 5%. So I'm currently at 224%. Wait, what? This must be 224% modified by the like modifying the five percent this must mean my critical strike chance is something like 12 percent or something right yeah i think this is deceptive i think this is five percent multiplied by 224 percent but this base two percent i think is huge now i don't think that's going to be represented it's not represented on the fireball tag itself yeah, and then on the character sheet, there's not, like, an, a line item for Fireball. Oh, I am wearing the crit neck. But still. Right? Oh! Hmm. Still, plus 100%. Is this not... Does that not increase? Hang on a sec. Is these say increased... So this is this makes sense that everything I've done is brought up from a 5% to an 11%. But this is just setting it. So the next one's going to be a crit and then it, then it'll go down to um, less than that. Okay. So right now, everything I'm doing to boost my critical chance isn't doing much because the neck piece is kind of making it irrelevant one way or another. This is guaranteeing that I'm either going to crit or not crit depending on how things have gone. But I can still work towards increasing crit chance with the idea that at some point that'll be the goal. Where am I going? The courtyard? Where's the courtyard? Can't mouse over these, right? What is this? I don't want to click on it. That's the abandoned tunnel. Oh yeah, that's right. I came through here. I went through the time rift. Now I don't want to go through the time rift. I just want to come over here. <laughs> guaranteed to crit or not crit. It's 50 fit free. Yeah. I mean, I guess every hit is guaranteed to crit or not crit, but I mean, it's either in a mode where it's going to guarantee a crit or it's going to be in a mode where it basically guarantees no crit. All right, this is right now. This is feeling so satisfying. This feels like it's functionally similar to the um, the teleport elemental Nova build. Eat a giant fireball. Eat many lesser fireballs. Um, there we go. Attempt to loot. Ooh, many glyphs and shards. So now, I've, now that I've fixed my um, my loot filter, we're not going to see another one of those mages for like a thousand years. Let's see what the hell they draw. <laughs> that of all items include itself. Okay, they're Gauss? That might not be the right person. Oh, hello. Okay, so something's do. I think that's a unique that shows up there. Exalted items might also show up on the minimap. I'm not sure. I don't think you can set on your loot filter manually. I don't think you can choose what shows up. Because, I mean, I would love it if you could set, like, listen, everything with, like, 15 tiers worth of beneficial affixes. Make sure it shows up on the mini map so I don't fail to loot it or something. I don't think you can do that. You 
nice if I could change directions on the dash. I'm not saying it's a failure of the game, but I can't. I'm just like, it would be nice if I could. I've been playing a lot of Warframe, so I'm used to, like, I've gotten so used to, like, super high mobility shit. And like, oh, I've missed my jump. That's okay. I'll just go into an aim glide. And just gently reposition. Whoa! My, um... I should really have a uh, flame ward back on my on my bar. Fools, fools! And if you haven't played Warframe and you're in any way into shooter games, watch my video. Like. Eight and a half minutes long. It's short. It's like, I don't do short videos. I did a short video for that one because it was like, I wrote a script for it and like used pre recorded footage because I was trying not to talk too much this week. I was like, I'll just do a highly edited video. Ooh, it's another I set not, item. I am not a man of many pockets. Which I would like to pick up. And anyway, if you're going to play, use my friend code. And we both get free stuff. Um, How do I get here? Well, let's try this way, see what happens. I'm hoping enough of these guys are dying, you know, behind me. A lot of them are on fire, so they don't die right away, but they'll die from the ignite at some point, in theory. Boss fight. Level up. Level up. Tempted to try to level up mid-fight, but it's probably a bad idea. They should not pass. Listen, Kirkland brand um, Gandalf. I like the big text. It's actually really cool. I'm gonna fireball all the ads. Oh, most of those. Are they missing or are they. I don't have Pierce. I think a bunch of those were missing. Oh, that's a shame. Like, I think I just didn't click on his hitbox properly. You have a lot of dodge chance. No, I, was, I meant the other way. My fireballs were missing him. But I think I was just not clicking where his hitbox was. Oh, uh, let's level up before we keep going. So I'm going to put the fifth point in here for sure. Because this theoretically triggers the Rune of Cataclysm. The enemy... Yeah, when I crit, I get that, which means I do more damage to enemies on low life. I wonder if I hit someone with a fireball and that brings them to low life... Does the ignite damage that's on them then get increased, or do I have to hit them again? Um, never late. Hey, I'm a wizard! Wizard is never late. After using a traversal skill, which includes my flame dash, your next non-channel spell has an additional spell damage and higher chance to critically strike. It's, and it's not increased critical strike, this is base stuff. And the critical strike chance bonus is double the spell cost at least 30 mana. Hang on, I wonder... After I use my flame rush, and it auto-casts... So let's say I get three stacks of my ruin. So it will auto-cast my... The, the, the big fireball from the triple ruin stack. And that costs more than 30 mana. I wonder if that triggers this. I... I think it might? Invocation will count and consume it. Does my... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. That's not what I meant to do it. Okay. Does this cost more than 30? It doesn't. Okay, so this is my... Um, my little spread thing. So this doesn't cost enough to trigger it. But if I get it to 30, which can happen from a long channel, and then this fires this off, that, that mega fireball costs more. What else do we get? If we do this... Oh, this is the increased Ignite chance. 
which is pretty good because we do have the uh, we take less damage for ignited, shocked or chilled enemies. And in general, the ignite's going to be pretty good, but we are kind of leaning in some crit. Spell damage and crit chance from never late node also applies to traversal skills and you gain ward when you use traversal skills. Runo dilation. After using a traversal skill, you gain increased cast speed and movement speed for a short duration. I, I mean, I like all this. We're we're operating around, especially right now, just for like leveling, like maybe, you know, again, at some point this might fall off, right? This is quite good for like trash clear leveling, like progression and stuff like that. At some point this might fall off, but for now it feels like continuing to lean into that. And especially since it, it works with some of our, our crit idea. I mean, at some point what I'm gonna need is, and I think this is mostly gonna be from items. I'm gonna need stuff that adds crit damage, not just crit chance. Or somehow interacts with, oh, um, with crits, you know, stuff that like, oh, you proc on crit or whatever. Have you come down? All right, going into the stream, I'd sort of been hoping to play the Sentinel because I hadn't really played much, except one time I did do the, the one Void character, but that was a long time ago, before the... Um, uh, before online was available. But now I'm really happy that we voted to try the uh, the Rune Master. I was scared. I'm still scared. But at least for now, we have a system that is working. Uh, do I have to kill this guy before that door opens? Probably. Eat giant fireball. Eat many smaller fireballs. Eat giant fireball. Like, repeat until death. So in the boss fights, I'm still going to need to make sure... What was that there? Uh, oh, that was the Rune Rune Cataclysm, right? Um, in the boss fights, I'm going to need to make sure maybe that I still f fit in my traversal skills to proc the abilities, but... Oh, shit, I got stuff going on here. Um, right, I was going one into Solar Rush for the speed, which then gets Smolder and Burn. Oh, yeah, the... That. Then this weird shit... I mean, for now, actually, I'm just thinking, what if I just max out Solar Rush for speed and range right now for leveling? And even later on for, like, Monolith Traversal, it might still be really good. Um, Right, let's get more Ignite Chance. We do one thing. It's fire. Let's lean into it. Lean into fire. What could go wrong? I mean, it's very classic mage, right? All I do is cast fireball all day long. By the way, if you play D&D, fireball is not your strongest action in any way whatsoever. You actually, as a as a mage in D&D, you're much better off spending your time casting spells that don't do damage. But, you know, that's not as fun. So people are still like, I fireball. And I fireball some more. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, oh yeah, the Lotus Falls. Uh, hold on, I gotta go down that middle place first, confirm that the stairs are Fouquet. And then I go down the sides, right? I'll just blast the King of Damage Spells. Isn't, um, again, don't... Don't let anything I'm about to say, like, ruin the fun of D&D for you. But when people, I think, are theory crafting like, builds and stuff, there we go. So now we got the extra quest markers. Um, don't they use like an Eldritch Blast as like the baseline minimum that if your build doesn't at least meet this, you're garbage. It's like not that impressive. Like for people who are like stupid min maxers. Of course, Eldritch Blast has other benefits in that like, you can literally do it every single round and forever. Okay, don't I shouldn't even say this. I'm 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 gonna give the wrong vibe for me. Indy is about having fun and role-playing a goddamn character. 
theory crafters, of course, are operating in a vacuum where all they're trying to do is figure out, hey, how do I design a character that does the most amount of damage? Just because that's the fun of, like, coming up with fun builds. Not even necessarily meant to be played. I am not a man of many pockets. Um, yeah. Some of these quest arrows can be very misleading in this area. Let me say, I'm going to come down here and it's going to be dead end. That's exactly it. I know that what you want to go is as far west or as far east, and then head north, or whatever we're calling this minimap direction. rares around, fireball twice, then cast the thing. I mean, I could still be flame rushing. But... Fools. Fools. If I'm having a hard time killing these guys, it might be worth um, holding the rush for the three. I am not. I am not a man of many. Pockets. Well, listen. I know we're gonna we're gonna have to figure out our. In, we, okay, I'm 20 minutes over my stream timer already. Let's say the stream's gonna end soon, and then I'll deal with your inventory, old man. So then we time travel, pick up a rock, and then we come back here. And um. Yeah, I think it's fine. Right. And then what I do is I travel somewhere else. And then weirdly long load screens be damned. Travel back over here. And we save some time because this sets me back to the middle of the map. This way. Oh, we've got Nevels. Fools. Fools. Is that my character saying that? Not a very nice guy. Yep. More crit on the fireball. And then more ignite. Crits, ignites. Sounds good. Supposed to be saying that? I don't know. Some of these statues talk. I did it again, see? Every time. It looks like you want to go this way. Oh, well, we got ourselves. I am not. I man. know you're not a man of many pockets. Listen. Um Okay, we we legit can't pick that up. Plus one to glacier. Actually, all the um any item that gives plus one to a skill, which I realized I did have one at some point, and I probably just vendored it. You that's a good one for shattering. Because what we're hoping to do is get that glacier out of there so that we can potentially use it for um, future glacier build. Maybe in this build. Maybe this build gets a glacier back. I don't know. Okay, we got ourselves a little wizard spot. So this time we've got our... Um, we've got our filter set to show the experimental shit. We can like precast this to load up a triple. Get out from there. Can't see you properly. Oh my god, you're annoying. You stop dodging my shit. At least even when you miss, I'm still generating my rune charges, but... So, how 
time he's getting shock and frost charges. Like, these are ignite char uh, stacks. But he's also getting some shock stack. Maybe, maybe one of my uniques? Whoa, we got a blank. I think I have to do a validate steam things because my... It's blank. So you have an experimental prefix on you, which I'm assuming is this blue bit. 14 mana gained on potion use. 14 or 17% increased mana regen for four seconds when you use a potion. Okay, that's pretty cool. Relic gives you, oh. Mm. I assumed that this was only in giving me chill and shock chances on things that did cold or lightning damage. This is adding chill, shock, and ignite to any elemental skill. Oh. That's better than I thought. I like how we're sort of the anti-wizard here. It's like, wizards want to stay at range. I'm like, no, no, I will just walk directly into a big group of enemies every time. That is how I operate. Just not generating enough damage to like kill them on our on when I do the two stack. It's annoying me. Well, sometimes we do. I did it again, didn't I? Well, keep walking goddamn to the right. Elements are not tied to the related element. Any chance for it to cure? Okay. And a little casual time travel. Pick up a rock. Go back. I should be, okay. Mm. Let's say I should go to town and sell. What I should do is end the stream. I'm going to kill my voice again. It's already super raspy. Folks, thanks a lot for coming out today. I really appreciate you. We'll be back on Monday. I don't know what we're going to be streaming. It might be some random stuff, or maybe I'll do more of this. Who knows? Who cares? We're going to play some games. We're going to have some fun. We're going to wrap it up now. We're going to rate a kiss for luck. And I'm going to see you on Monday. You know, if I can talk again. Bye-bye.